Mythos Busters, investigating the mystery, monsters, and madness of Arkham Horror, the card game. Hello and welcome to episode 31, we just talked about this, of Mythos Busters, where today it is on! And you'll figure out in a few minutes why. Joining me today is the full working crew. We've got Scott, who we've been missing for a little while. Hi, Scott. Uh, Hello, I have... uh... Ended my recusion of the podcast. Yeah, that, is that a is that a it, yeah? A it, it works. Sure, it works. and and we appreciate that. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, then the the full working crew means we also have Nick. Hi, Nick. Hi. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> Got to keep going with them awkward intros, I guess. Well, I mean, today it was your turn, so mm. I'm, I'm glad we got through that together. Fair enough, Ian. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> stole my goddamn thunder hi ian <laughs> hey, hello <laughs> and uh in relation to the the comment i made earlier about it being on we have reluctantly allowed into our midst some some wolves among the sheep we've got frank and peter of that other podcast you may have heard of called is it uh, look what i found is, is that what, i've that dealt I, i've got a plan i think <laughs> oh, okay, perfect. How I'll are see you? you in hell. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you you introduced us together just to confuse us so that we both try and speak at exactly the same time. Um, I'm Frank. Hello, hello everyone. Hello America. Hello North America. Dragon so Peter. quickly hello. dissected my cunning plan. <laughs> and Peter, yeah, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I am here as well. Yeah, hello. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Hi. Hello. So today we've got an extra special episode planned out for everyone. If you've been paying attention to our social media and or Discord, you may have heard us mention that we are finally going to settle the blood feud today. Uh, Peter and Frank are, are here to play a little game with us to determine who uh, who takes at least the temporary crown for Arkham Podcast Supremacy. Fantastic. Is everyone excited? Yeah, very excited. I very can't excited. wait. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whole, so before we hop into so it, let's... Uh... Oh, sorry, what, Nick? Sorry, I didn't that was me. <laughs> Oh, that was, it was it was me. Sorry. It was me. It was me. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> yeah, we, we've just I, I think am we've just, Spartacus. <laughs> we've just tipped over the number of people you can reasonably have speaking <laughs> in yeah. one channel. That's that's true. This is going to be organized chaos. So let's bring in our other guest speakers. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, let's uh, I suppose let's hop in first with what we've been playing lately. Uh, let's let's let guests go first. Uh, Peter. What what uh, what you been playing lately? You got any notable notable plays or campaigns going that you'd like to mention? Well, I, I've literally just come, I, as you all know, sped across town uh, from a, a Dunwich Legacy playthrough on hard. Mm. Ooh, so How'd we that managed. Go? It was going okay when I left. Uh, whether it's all falling apart now, I'm not sure. <laughs> We'd got uh, most of the way through the first three scenarios, but uh, one of my friends who was there hadn't played any of Dunwich, so it was. Oh. It was a fun experience for him, yeah. Uh, but I did manage to get off in uh, House Always Wins. I managed to play uh, Storm of Spirits with Double or Nothing. Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Living the dream. Felt pretty good. And how much damage did you do? Uh, it was 10 damage. Oh. <laughs> well, it was against... Did you pull bad d- stuff and also ping everyone else? No, I, d- I definitely did not because... So I, I, I was. it was looking a bit... Uh, it was touch and go. Because uh, obviously I, I was a four willpower and it was a two uh, fight enemy, but then luckily just at the last minute, uh, a conglomeration of spheres showed up, and it made it an absolute hmm. no brainer. <laughs> <laughs> Always good. Who were you playing? With so I was, uh, I was, I uh, was no Zoe. Zoe, Ooh. okay. Nice. Yeah. I I stuck a cheeky storm of spirits in my Zoe deck too, and I have not regretted it. <laughs> It's really nice. It's a lot less fun on uh, Miskatonic Museum, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, 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 Frank? I, I, yeah. <laughs> no, sorry, go ahead. No, no, that was it. I was going to say I spent most of Miskatonic Museum standing around doing nothing, really. <laughs> <laughs> bored Zoe, going to be bored. Yeah. 
Frank, how about you? What you what you playing nowadays? Um, so I yesterday got to play Echoes of the Past, Unspeakable Both, and A Phantom of Truth. We had a big day of it with our four player group, and it's Yorick, Min, Sephina, and I'm playing Akachi in that uh, campaign. And yeah, it was it was really good. I have already taken one physical trauma due to being smacked around a bit. And I think I spent all three scenarios on four or five damage almost immediately. It was it was quite wow. strange. So I think those guys that I play with just think that the way I play is just high damage all the time. And <laughs> no one has really any damage healing because everyone's like, well, who gets damaged? And I spend the whole, like, all the way through Oath. I'm not going to give any spoilers for that, but there are so many ways that you can get pinged for a point of damage. And mm-hmm. I was just terrified essentially for about half of the game which is quite a fun way of playing arkham basically pure fear all the time yeah existing in that uh that space where you know you're just one bad pull from from getting iced that's it's an interesting place to occupy for a while oh and then of course at the end of scenarios i'm the one with delve too deep going anyone want to delve and everyone's going no frank you're nearly (laughs) dead like we'll be fine but you'll die it's like but it could be one xp but delve is life, yo. Yeah, and we're on we're on thirty three XP after five scenarios, and like yeah, I've done are. nothing in any of the scenarios to help apart from be this sort of <laughs> injured burden. But you know, at the end of the scenarios, I'm I'm throwing in some XP. <laughs> That's all you can ask for sometimes. Yeah, I suppose. yeah, yeah. It's the mystic way. <laughs> it's the mystic way for sure. Nick, how about you? What you got going? I know you're doing a little bit more probably on the development side with your uh, with your yeah stuff that you're developing. Yeah. Um. So last night I had a few friends over. Um. I was expecting to have four friends, and so I was like, well, then I can. I guess I can kind of GM the game and let them play four player. But then two of them ended up not showing up or not being able to. So the three of us we played. Um. We tested the next two scenarios in my winter winds campaign so scenario three and four and then we tested the first scenario in uh the creative license campaign uh, journey of the providence um and all three of those went to varying degrees of success uh, i don't want to talk too much about them obviously because they're still in development but scenario three of winter winds uh has been tested extensively at this point so that went pretty much as expected um, pretty tight scenario i'm actually really proud of that one scenario four this was the first time it hit the table and um, I, I have been taking some feedback from people saying that, well, your enemies are all really easy. And other than like maybe one or two, they're all actually pretty easy to handle. So I was like, okay, scenario four will be the scenario where there's, you know, more stronger threats. Well, it turns out that a small encounter deck combined with multiple enemies combined with multiple really strong enemies makes for a pretty bad experience. So <laughs> that game was over relatively quick. And also I tried to do some really cool things with the map. Um, because I like my location play. Um, and so it turned into just having like... What, you? Yeah, I know. Surprising, right? So it turned into just having like literally two locations in play and then a third one that's not connected to anything because of reasons. And we're all just trying to bounce around between multiple five and six combat enemies. And I'm like, okay, I think I see where I can fix this. So, and then the the other scenario, which was a uh, part one of a campaign that uh, myself and a group of others are working on, um, n- most notably... Uh, Casey in our chat and Josh in our chat, as well as a number of other people who have lent their hands as well. Um, we played that three player and that one, um, it wasn't as tense as we wanted it to. So there's going to be some adjustments made to make sure that it, it, uh, it, it feels more like a challenge. Cause right now it, the encounter deck kind of tested everything that we had, um, you know, meagerly rather than really hitting us hard in one or two areas. So, but yeah, uh, they're all coming together. So it's nice to see that. Do you guys who who do your your development and, and fan made work? Do you guys ever play through a scenario the first time and be like, I hated that, but I don't know why? Like, is it always obvious what you need to change? Um, from the the ones that I have that I've specifically developed, yes. Um, I can usually I'm usually pretty good about pinpointing what what I was hoping, what I was going for, and versus how it came out. Um, but I guess I don't. I'm not sure if Ian has met similar situations. Uh, sometimes there'll be, like, a general feeling right after I play, like, uh, that was... Usually it's not, like, outright hate, but usually it's something... Like, 
I almost feel like I'd feel better if I outright hate it, but if I'm just feeling like meh afterwards, then it's like worse because it's mm. just like a <laughs> kind of mediocre feeling. And then usually mediocre, it, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he just drives through my living room until. <laughs> but uh, uh, usually when I drill down and think about it, then there'll be like a clear reason why, like oh, there's not enough pressure or blah blah right. blah, whatever the case may be. But yeah. yeah. One thing I've noticed when I was designing cards for Scenario 3 of Winter Winds, uh, there was a couple cards that I was doing because I, I felt like they needed to be there. And as I'm writing up the text on the encounter cards, I found I kept like looking away and thinking about other things and all that. And, and sure, I mean, I get distracted, but then at the same time, I'm just like, I'm bored of writing these cards. And I'm like, if I'm bored of designing these cards, why am I even putting them in there? So I totally scrapped them and, and changed uh, what was in that encounter set. And I, I feel like it's worked better, so... Oh, that yeah. is that is what you want. Yeah, I mean, if I'm bored yeah. making the scenario, then people are gonna be bored playing <laughs> totally. it. <laughs> I feel like with any creative endeavor, you can't be too tied to anything you make. So yeah, you have to be willing to just like cut Kill whole mechanics darlings. that yes. you thought you loved or cards. Yep, for sure. Interesting. And uh, Scott, what have you been up to lately? Uh, I recently just finished a Dunwich Expert campaign um with wow. bd flory and spoon a couple of our, our listeners and uh we've been playing yeah, quite a bit finished often. yeah uh we got finished on <laughs> <There it is. laughs> uh because expert is expert and expert, not expert minus eights and minus sevens are a thing Jeez. it's like you're playing a game with like a bag with like three tentacles in it it's just i mean it's super fun it it uh i find like we've been playing a lot of hard um and this is i think my second foray into expert uh and then like last night i played some standard and i was like what is this like, <laughs> kindergarten game <laughs> it was so nice arkham for babies are yeah. we gonna be able to play together ever again <laughs> fisher price my first arkham like it was <laughs> God. um but you know it, it's really interesting expert taught me to think about the game a little bit differently i think where i i have a much more clear view of what i need to pass mm. and what i'm okay with just being like well let's let chaos decide you know what i mean like mm -hmm. those decisions on okay what cards do i need to commit um how many should i commit how important is this like do i dump my hand because this screws me mm. uh, and I, taking that back to playing in standard i'm like wow that's a, a, it's something i didn't think of before because standard is a little easier to pass stuff yeah um a little yeah um, and sometimes you're like, oh yeah, plus two, that's fine. You know, even on like a serious one, you're like, okay, I'll go plus three. But like expert, you're like, all right, well, how do I get to nine up? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't. So, yeah. That I think just yeah. dipping your toe in hard, e even that gives you that same experience where mm -hmm. if you want to go to plus three, it's probably going to be a bit of a commitment. And that makes you mm -hmm. start to evaluate all the tests and go, you know, we, we were talking before we began recording about skids. It's like, if you come up against the willpower five test, it's better oh. to commit nothing than to be like throwing your entire hand to try and pass a test that you're already three below. And yeah, I think the higher difficulties really make you sort of prioritize your tests a little bit better. Which is yeah, really sometimes good. you just have to accept that bad things are going to happen to you. <laughs> and yeah, like, like exactly what you said, right? Like skids on willpower, you're like, well... This is going to happen. You draw a token, like, yep, I failed. That's, you know, and you deal with the consequences rather than spend a bunch to try and prevent it and then you lose anyways. And so there's a, there's a British yeah. police film called Hot Fuzz, which I think did okay in the US as well. Oh. And it has a scene where one of them vaults all of these different fences and then the fat, yes. oh, yes. fat <laughs> policeman behind him just runs through each fence, just sort of like collapses them. That's I always think of, of that when Skids takes a willpower test. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. Skids just wants to be a policeman officer. It's a... <laughs> uh, I realized that I actually kind of skipped Ian. What are you, what are you playing, Ian? Uh, a few different things. Uh, the latest... I think it's... A, yeah, the latest kind of new campaign I started was actually Solo Roland, which I uh, was a big fan of playing as Solo Roland, obviously, during the core set. I got my, uh, my legendary... Um, Midnight Mass run where he got all the cultists solo. But uh, I didn't play him at all through Dunwich, actually, so I'm like, oh, I should bring him back out for Carcosa. 
and had a ton of fun. I've played through Oath. I still have to take him through Phantom. But uh, just with the cards that are available, I mean, he was already, you know, in course that day is really strong, but he was potentially blue cards good yellow cards good yeah but he did have that big weakness of uh sanity which he didn't have as many ways to deal with but now uh kind of in the past i used to go like the beat cop route because i really love the upgraded beat cop um Mm -hmm. and the plus one combat but now i've taken completely different approach with art students and then calling in favors to uh get extra uses out of the art students and then I have working a hunch in there, and plus Roland's natural ability. Like I hardly ever have to do actual investigate tests. So Are you? He's... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Finish. No, you can go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ian. I thought you were close. I was going to ask if you went with the Malison Inquiring Mind uh, combo. Yeah, I do have both Malison and Inquiring yeah. Mind in there. So, kind of what I go for is using art students towards the beginning and then I'll get Malison out or you know depending on the order I draw things mm-hmm. and the, if I get Malison out I can always do the calling in favors and etc but yeah the, the whole setup works really well and of course the benefit of the art students is they're great sanity soaks so, yes. <laughs> yeah. so uh, I have he you know sometimes there'll be a little bit of sanity pressure but for the most part he's been keeping clean because he just dumps all the horror on the allies <laughs> and yeah has been able to do really well even though Carcosa puts a lot of pressure there yeah so the one thing I wanted to mention I, I started the Carcosa campaign with my sister um, and in discord and i wish i could credit who actually made it but i can't remember right now but there was some discussion about uh calling in favors with duke and the new uh, inspiring inspiring presence card skill card that we that we talked about that ready is an asset mm-hmm. if you're successful um so someone put a build together of of kind of that that deck with duke and uh that you know this inspiring presence isn't out yet but i kind of threw together a version of that kind of idea so heavy allies um so it's got peter sylvester laboratory assistant for a lot of draw and then calling in favors and i even threw in david redfield because why not (laughs) so the the whole idea of the deck is to draw a lot get a lot of resources and just go to town with duke and oh man that deck is fun i got hammered with uh oh sorry go ahead i was gonna say is this the one that was on arkham db sort of in the last couple of days yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's 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 called. I, ba- I um, basically read read that thread and then made the deck that night. Yeah. It says hello. Yes. This is dog. The deck. <laughs> yes. This is dog. That's the <laughs> one. Yeah. That's, it's a, that's a the can. One. A can. A can from the the Discord. Because we, we were chatting about. Right. Yeah, we were chatting about Renfield and the maths on Renf- Renfield over the past few days. Oh, um, Renfield is so good. The more I play him, the more I love him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually I've just pulled up the deck on Arkham DB. Uh, the cost curve is there's 11 cards that cost one and then 10 cards that cost two and nothing else yep <laughs> everything's either one or two cost it's a thing of beauty and then so so what i did uh, we haven't played uh um last king yet but i'm upgrading into scrapper and yeah. uh something I to think spend I'm just all that money on my peters because i ended up taking a mental trauma i just got ha- i got hammered hard i pulled two tentacles on rotting remains uh. And I could not cycle my allies out. I pulled Duke to my hand, back to my hand twice, so he effectively healed four horror off me. It still wasn't enough. <laughs> oh, wow. Anyway, that deck is really fun, and I'm, I'll be excited to add Inspiring Presence to it when that finally hits. But calling, calling in favors, in favors is, so, is so dirty. <laughs> it's so dirty. It works so well with so many allies. Any ally now that has an enter play effect, like, all of a sudden, that that could be the cornerstone of a calling in favors archetype for a certain investigator. Yeah. So keep an eye on that stuff. And Ian, you were just talking about Roland soaking up horror on Art Student. I was doing that Art Student build back before calling in favors came out and was like, this is amazing. He never takes any horror. But what if you're also able to pick up the card and replay it? Yeah. It's like <laughs> insane. <laughs> yeah. It's good. It's very, very good. All right, guys. It's time. Let's play some Family Blood Feud. (laughs) Cue metal music. Scott, I know you'll have my back. You'll throw in some metal music, right? 
yeah. <laughs> never, never mind. Nick's got ya. <laughs> it's there. Uh, I'm gonna be on Hamestar hey, Runner. <laughs> the system is down. Yeah, that's the what I was going for. It's grounded. Okay, all right. Damn, we could get we could get into a Homestar Runner episode if we wanted to, I'm sure. So we're going to play a little Family Feud. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the game, it's one of uh, America's greatest game show treasures. Here's the deal. We're going to split into two teams. The division between the two teams should, pre- should be pretty obvious at this point. Basically what we've done is we sent out a survey asking a few questions, and uh, people answered them. So what we have here, for each question, I've got the top five answers from that survey. When it's that team's turn, they're going to try to guess what is the best or most likely answered answer to that question. And obviously each question, depending on how popular it was, has a certain number of points. And uh, we'll, we'll award from there. So we're going to start this out with a little bit of a showdown. So each team will select a delegate. Select a delegate. Now? Oh, I select yep. Nick. Oh, you typed the loudest. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a great criteria. I like that. All right, who will be re- representing Drawn to the Flame? Oh, there's only two of us. Who, who's the team leader, Frank? The it's Queen. You. The Queen. <laughs> Do you want me to get Andrea? She can come back on the recording if you want. <laughs> yeah, that's three on three. Perfect. She's only going to show us both up, Frank, so I don't... I'm sure I will be the delegate. That's that's get, yeah, okay. Delegate. With the context that I had a very strange upbringing and have never seen Family Fortunes or Family Feud, uh, so Family Fortunes is the British Frank, name it, for it. So if I bumble my way through this, seen, that seems fine. Seen, it's okay, really easy. So, so, it's okay. I was only half famous. listening when he described it. So <laughs> I'm going to give you a category. And what you're trying to guess is the most popular answer, not the factual answer. Just what you think man on the street, man, woman on the street would have answered right. that question. And this survey was put out to our Facebook group, Reddit, Discord. Uh, Discord, Facebook group, and I think I shared it to... Oh, yeah, and Discord. Yep. So we actually got uh, 96 votes, so oh, we wow. almost got the full 100. Okay. Uh, but either way, the the questions ended up kind of so much that there there wasn't... Yeah, normally for Family Feud, there's like eight to ten answers, but these categories are so narrow. There's only so many answers, so that's why we narrowed it down to the top five. Also, not so we don't make each one of these like a ten minute uh, debacle. <laughs> there's four answers that are just ones. <laughs> okay. So I'm sorry, drawn guys. It, did Frank? Are you going first? I, yes, I've delegated myself. Okay, so there you go. Frank and Nick, I'm going to get ready by your keyboards. I'm going to say the question. What is that noise? <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> like hammers of four. <laughs> Stampeding antelope. Um, so I'll, I'll ask the question. The first one to type in their answer. We're not going to go like for perfect spelling, but oh, it good. does have to be. It has to be recognizable. Intelligible. Are, are we typing into the live podcast chat channel? Yep, so yep. So cool. ch- type straight into the live podcast chat. So basically what happens is you guys get, uh, this is squaring off to see which team gets to take this question as their first category. Ah, uh, okay, I see. So whoever gives the better answer gets it. All right. Are you ready? I think so. Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> first yeah, question. I was just typing drawn to the flame in case that was the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, first question. A card Rex would pick first in kickball. In kickball? Oh. Frank. What does that noise mean? That means you get to answer first. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, can I answer what I just wrote in the chat? Yes, I would encourage that. Um, then I'll say burglary. Because that's a card Rex burglary. would pick. I don't know what kickball is. The kickball is where you kick a ball, right? It's like right. Yeah. Kickball, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just your standard school sports yeah. captain selection process. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say burglary. All right. He could steal the so ball. So burglary. 
Oh, unfortunately, Burglar's not up there, oh, Nick. Wow. So now I just get to say it. I don't have to type it, right? No, you can just say it. Okay. I've got a plan. I've got a plan. <laughs> what? <laughs> what a stunning start. Wow. Who goes into kickball Frank, without Nick, a plan? You, you made me feel better that I thought I knew nothing about the people, but clearly we, we both don't. <laughs> <laughs> We're all as clueless about this community. Equally. Right. Now I'm like... All right. Back to Frank. Racking my brains for that Dropkick Murphy Rex deck. A card Rex... Does it have to be legal to his deck? Well, I would imagine so. <laughs> so, so this... Yeah, so here's the thing. So. These questions were open to interpretation. People could type in whatever they wanted. So, so it could be a Netrunner card. That, this is the question. So it could be a Netrunner card. It could be a Wars card! Yeah. <laughs> um, damn. So, uh, a card Rex would pick first... In kickball, or insert other sport. God. Baseball bat. <laughs> Baseball bat. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> Come on, guys. This is the best start <laughs> ever. Okay, okay. um... Nick? I can't consult with my team, can I? Because I'm, like, up at Not the at podium. All right. <clears throat> nope. You're at the podium. Rex in kickball. Uh, and it's not I've got a plan. I love that you're picturing so... that you're up at the podium, Nick. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you're not up here. You should get up here. <laughs> oh, it's nice. Sorry. Yeah, I was just sitting down. <laughs> surprise! You, surprised you got the buzzer It's kind of first. amazing that you got to the button first. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I don't, uh, fire axe. That was nearly my fire choice. Fire axe. What the hell? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so they're obviously okay. not building a Rex deck. <laughs> I didn't I didn't expect to have to give clues this early. But this question is essentially good Rex cards. What I've okay. got a plan as a good Rex card! <laughs> yeah, so is burglary! Yeah, it is, but not in the not <laughs> in the top burglary. five apparently. Oh my god. Alright, I got do another I, one then. Do I get a guess? Or is it Yep, back to Frank. Good Rex card. Deduction? Damn you. Show me deduction. Damn hey! it. Yes. Deduction <laughs> was number four <laughs> worth 17 points. Number one. Wow. You guys going to play the point? Well, it's been great right playing now. with you guys. Lovely to see you all. <laughs> <laughs> so I was moving to tentacle time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so now, Drawn guys, you get to play out the rest of this category. So we'll hop back to the team. Peter, so, so, uh, first what, of, what is what, another card that Rex what, would pick first in kickball? What score was that one again? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Was that I said seventeen? Yep, did you say? We're, so basically, there are four more answers for that question, and Do you're going to try what, to guess them. What position that was in? Was that in first? That was place, number or? four, worth number seventeen four. points. It, it, can we consult, or is it just me? It is just you. Uh, uh, I am going to go for. Uh, Mr. Backwards name himself, Dr. Milan Christopher. Dr. Milan Christopher. Show me the Chris. Oh, yeah. yeah. Number one there answer, 25 nice points. Pizza. Yeah. Nice. Number one was that. <laughs> that was number one. Oh, man. You should have sent, sent me in first, Frank. I should have. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> I'm not going to answer anymore. All right. Frank. Nominate Peter. <laughs> you know, this is a different, <laughs> different game show. Okay, I think I have. I think Come I have on. a guess here. Magnifying glass. All right, magnifying glass. What? Ooh, unfortunately, oh, not on what? there. What? Mm. Wow! 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 All right, back to Peter. <laughs> how many? Oh, how many wow. guesses oh, do wow. we get now, Sean? Uh, you get three wrong guesses, and then. Okay. Mythos Busters gets a chance to steal. Okay, so that's one of our three. So, so yep. back to not me all again. the other guesses I had before. <laughs> no, luckily. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> normally the buzzer doesn't go that long. <laughs> the face-off. Um, I think I'm going to go for Shortcut. Shortcut? Hmm. I mean, that's, it's a good secret a card, guess. isn't it? So, let's see. Is Shortcut up there? Hey, hey, 20 points, number three answer. 20? Okay, there's something. <laughs> Frank, you can just go home. I'll, I'll I'm so this. offended. All <laughs> right. That was number three. Milan was number one? Correct. So there's something between right, so Ma Milan and, and 
shortcut and get into the mind of the Facebook Arkham group. Well, and also keep in mind, all right, so I'll repeat the question because I'll give you a little hinty hint here. One of the answers is very dependent on the wording of the question or the, the content of the question, I suppose. So a card Rex would pick first in kickball. A ball. Yeah, what's the ball card, Nick? <laughs> <Not your turn. laughs> um, Nick's oh, already uh, switch hitting. Oh, I, I, I've got an idea. I've got an idea now. Okay. Um, well, we've still got two lives, right? So even if I pick something, yep. absolutely ludicrous. Yeah. You're only one strike. Um, I'm going to choose mind over matter. Ooh. Mind over matter. Ooh. Show me mind over matter. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, no. That's strike two. All right, Peter. Right. No pressure or anything. Uh, after your huge hint, we heard cl- uh, clanging to the floor there. I think <laughs> I might go for the big man on campus, Peter Sylvester. Mmm. Mmm. That that wow. man could probably play some kickball. All right. Show me Peter Sylvester. No. Whoa. Number five answer worth 15 points. Still a number two. Yep. And it wasn't baseball bat because I tried that earlier. (laughs) Damn. All right. So, Frank, again, no pressure. Yeah, a lot of pressure felt. Um, (laughs) Good. If only I'd fanned out all my player cards in front of me before this began. (laughs) (laughs) Right? (laughs) And searching Arkham DB for kickball isn't helping me. (laughs) Man, I feel like it would be... I know you can do this. Come on, what's a good Rex card? Good Rex card. I feel like the host is surprisingly biased in the other direction yeah no i'll, be uh, typing, yeah. I'll, I'll be giving you guys the answers via private message when it's your turn oh okay <laughs> he could be a lot, lot more uh well i think i must play rex differently from a lot of people because i think magnifying glass is good in rex um yeah dynamite oh yeah that is a good rex card um it is what King a hunch. Oof. That's I'm, I just can't think of anything now. I'm gonna go. Yeah, I think I, I think I would have gone for that actually. Okay, thanks, Peter. That's make me feel better. <laughs> so working, 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 a hunch, working a hunch. Working a hunch. Working a hunch. That would be more than shortcut. All That'd right. be madness. This is this is for the for the thing. Show me working a hunch. Oh, Ooh. what? <laughs> Ooh. All I was right, say, if that got number busters, two, then I don't know how to build Chance Rex. to steal. Now, for the steal, you get to confer with each other, so... Okay. What do you guys think of higher ed? Mm. Yeah, I suppose we've all We're... been picking level zero cards, haven't we? But is it free... What is the phrasing again? The uh... A card Rex oh. would pick first in kickball. So are people thinking only level zero because they're picking for... Or I guess it could be any card, though. Yeah. Yeah, I th- yeah let's just try higher ed, I think, right? Because people would, like, they're just going to think of that. There's nothing else that really stands out, right? Like, nothing else yeah. that's super... Yeah. Unless we're thinking outside of Seeker, but then we get dangerous, like... Because right. there's a lot of options. Like, uh, yeah. Ward of Protection, or right. Delve Too Deep. Yeah. Because the only other one I was thinking of was field work, but I think... <gasps> oh, yes! That's a kickball <laughs> field! <laughs> well, would you pick field work over shortcut? Well, you probably would. I don't know. I'm not calling it. I flubbed that hot seat, so you guys go. <laughs> so field work or higher ed? Uh, uh, my oh geez. Do they only get? Do they only get, they only get one zero, guess, hey? Sean? It, yeah, it depends on yep. if they're thinking only one guess or not. All right, guys, one chance to steal. I'm going to need an answer. Right, Ian, you pick. Oh God. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. Okay. Field work. Let's try field work. All right. Show me field work. Oh, oh no. Drawn scores 70. It's probably higher points? ed. It's probably higher ed. Yeah. All right. So show me that last answer. Higher education. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Oh. All right. 
So that is drawn to the flame on the board with 77 points heading into the next round. Guys, someone please come to the podium. Okay, Scott, Scott time, will Frank? come to the podium. Peter, you go to the podium. <laughs> All right. Everyone ready? So, so again, just so we're clear, type the first person to type their answer into the the Discord in an intelligible manner is the one who gets the answer first. <laughs> okay. For the listeners at home, S- S- Scott has just typed K-J-O-F-B-K-J-O-D-F-S-B-J-K. Oh, you missed the, s- the semicolons as well. I, I yeah. did. <laughs> Punctuation is important. The, it's, it's, it's compound garbage. I like how it sounded like a jackhammer was going off and then we just get that message in chat. <laughs> All right, guys, what is an enemy card which deserves to be set on fire and dropped into a well of gasoline? <laughs> oh. Oh, man. Type, 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 type. Hi, Peter. Woo! All right. <laughs> Scott? Oh, unlucky uh, Peter. I answered Whippoorwills. Whippoorwills. Let's see if Whippoorwills is up there. Every number that's one. That's a good answer. Yeah, it's got to be. Yep, number one answer for yes. 60 points. Ooh, 60! I, I must right. say, my favorite designed enemy, but also <laughs> light that on fire. <laughs> yes, please do. All right, Mythos Busters, are you going to play? Uh, What do you think, guys? Should we play? Play, play it. We play, already got play, the number play. one, so... Yeah, let's, well, let's play it. All right, we'll play it. Nick! Eight. What is an enemy card which deserves to be set on fire and dropped into a well of gasoline? I'm going to say conglomeration of spheres. Ooh, conglomeration of spheres. <laughs> Woo! Nice. That's correct. Number two answer. Oh. 22 points. So what about number two? Ian, can you give me an enemy card which deserves to be set on fire and dropped into a well of gasoline? <laughs> well, I'm going to go with my mortal enemies, the night gun. Night Gaunt. Mm. Hunting Night Gaunt, number three answer, 11 points. All right, Scott. <clears throat> Ooh. Um. Hmm. See, it's hard because I, I, I remember pictures. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now it gets hard beyond those three. Uh, I'm trying to think of oh, what's it's called. It's a, it's a cultist who, at the end of... The, the phase, the mythos phase, it gets a thing. Can we help him? Doom. No? Nope. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go with... Uh, oh, it's um, Wizard Wizard of the Order. Yes! Yes. Wizard of the Order. Wizard of the Order. Show me Wizard of the Order. Ooh, oh. no, that's one strike. Back to Nick. All right. Um, let's see. We already got Whippoorwills up there. And we already got Spheres and the Night Gaunt. Two more. Corset will probably be a safe bet. Although Dunwich. Um, I'm going to go with... What's the other... Shoot. What's the other... Um, the other... Mon- the other... Whatever you call it. Uh, in the spheres, Helpful. yeah, in the spheres encounter set, the other guy, the it's not s- servant of the l- servant of the lurker. Servant of the lurker. All right, show me, servant of the lurker. No, oh. strike two. Oh, Ian, <laughs> it's on you, buddy. Uh, if you don't yeah, get like... this right, Drawn gets a chance to steal. I know what I think offhand, but like Nick said, is it going to be one of the older sets? I, won't. I would want it. I think I'm just going to say what I think, which is the worst of the newer enemies, which is Poltergeist. Deserves Poltergeist. to be set on fire. Okay. Ooh. Poltergeist. <gasps> yes. Ooh, nice. Number four answer for seven points, and that actually wraps the question because there were no other enemies that had enough votes to even be put on the map. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so Mythos Buster scores the full 100 on that question, and we move to question three. So it's currently Drawn to the Flame 77, Mythos Busters 100. Guys, send up a delegate, please. 
Shall I go again, Peter? I, I think, yeah, I think you go back. We'll, we'll just all I pay. think it's my turn. Cool. Okay. Let me get at my keyboard. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. All right, and uh, Drawn Guys, who, who you got up? I'm up. Frank Frank is up. I'll talk about myself perfect, in the third perfect person. Frank. <laughs> Frank and Ian. All right, we're good. Guys, <clears throat> what is a treachery that's worth the cancel every time? <laughs> All right. Oh. <laughs> Frank? Wow, well, now that I've seen Ian's, can I answer Ian's? <laughs> <laughs> you may not. <laughs> I, I wrote Beyond the Veil. All right, Beyond the Veil. Is the number one answer oh, at 41. Thank goodness. Really? Wow. Ancient Evils isn't? What? You guys want to play? <laughs> yes. I suppose I didn't I didn't ever... Like, does anyone ever pass on playing, honestly? It's a weird rule of family feud that you can just leave it for the opposing team. Maybe. I think if it's a hard We question. should have left the, um, the kickball question to them. That was... Impossible. <laughs> I, guess the hope, I guess the hope is like you're going to come in and steal the sneaky answer at the end, but yeah. I don't know how often that actually pans out. All right. Peter. Hello. What's a treachery that's worth the cancel every time? So I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Um, I'm fairly sure a particular card will be in there. And I think Frank and I both know what that is. But is it worth investigating some other answers first or just locking in? Do we lock in the safe one? Does it make any difference? Only if you get three wrong in between. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, I'm not allowed to discuss with you. Once we've got two wrong, maybe we go for this. I don't know. I can't think of any more that I really want to do. So while I'm wasting time talking about this, <laughs> maybe Frank has found another one. And I'm going to say Ancient Evils. Show me Ancient Evils. Of course, that's up there. Number two answer, 35 points. Oh. All right, Frank. What's a treachery that worse that's worth the cancel every time? Just quickly running through all the scenarios in the game. I given that we've been giving our good friend Schizo Tool quite a lot of love, I'm gonna go out on a bit of a limb and say Frozen in Fear. Alright. Frozen in Fear. Oh. Ooh, not on the board. Ooh. That's one strike. He's back to Peter. me again. Oh, oh this What's is a this treachery is... that's worth that cancel every time. Man, this this is again. This, this is, these are not factual this... answers. This is what the community answered. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm thinking back because it it seems that they're more focused on the um, core and Dunwich so far from the answers we've seen. So maybe that's. Oh, how about uh, kidnapped? Kidnapped. Maybe, maybe. All right, show me kidnapped. Oh, oh my god! Number five answer for six points. I thought that'd be higher. That is a horrible card. I thought it would too. <laughs> All right, Frank, back to you. Wow, I think it seems like Dunwich is pretty fertile ground. What's a treachery that's worth the cancel every time, Frank? Yeah, what is a treachery that's worth the cancel every time? I thought Frozen in Fear was such a gimme, but clearly not. Uh, we'll try it again. Maybe it's Mystic. different this time. I, I was I was <laughs> thinking about that, yeah. Um, <laughs> can you check again, Sean? Are you sure it's not? <laughs> yeah. um, hmm. Kidnapped. You <laughs> made me laugh while I was drinking. Sorry, sorry. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so we've only had one strike, right? So Correct. it's a relative free play. I can think of a few in Dunwich. And I wonder which is more fitting. I'm going to go Terror from Beyond. Terror from Beyond. Show me Terror from Beyond. Oop, not up there. Strike two. I can't even wow. picture that card. That's, That's the... the one that makes you pick a skill, or pick a card type and discard oh. it. Yeah. That one is pretty rough. Yeah, yeah I must admit, I, I was tempted to pick that as well. Okay, thanks, Peter. You just 
<laughs> As my mind is, is slowly corroded by that, that negative buzzer sound, you're trying to boil me up. Here, I can use I can use the longer one next oh, time. No, don't do that. <laughs> no, don't do that. Just picture him leaning on the button. Yeah. <laughs> so there's there's a few. There's actually one in uh, Miskatonic Museum. I was thinking about, um, but I don't know whether we could go for corroded from Pafta Carcosa. All right. I will do that. I will corrosion. go for corroded. Okay, is it corrosion? Yeah, sorry. It's corrosion. We'll count it. Corrosion. Number four answer, six points. Three for three. Yeah, that deserves it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right, one answer left. That was number four, was it? Frank? Correct. Frank, what's what's that last treachery that's worth the cancel every time? Um, What indeed? It's all right, Frank. I haven't got any wrong so far, so you know. We're... I know, I know. That's, <laughs> I can see who the weak link is, and all I can think of is, is yeah, me. Um, how about on wings of darkness? On wings of darkness, a little bit of midnight mass, and well, I suppose blood on the altar. Anger. On wings of darkness. Oh, yeah, I've just not on even there. in saying it, I've thought of like four others <laughs> that I would put up. There. It's always the way, isn't it? That's how that works. Yeah. All right, Mythos Busters for the chance to steal. Ooh. The only thing that came to mind, and it's literally just because I was thinking, I don't know the names of any actual encounter cards. Was Tuxedo John Tron? <laughs> I don't remember what the actual name of it is. <laughs> oh, um, pulled pushed from into beyond. Pushing, push in, pushed push into, into the beyond. Yeah. What about Straight Jacket? <gasps> oh, Straight Jacket. I, yeah, the only question is how many people have played, like, pe- that survey's been out for a while. It's been like that, a month. Uh, just, just so everyone's clear on timeline, Echoes, uh, or sorry, not Echoes, in Unspeakable Oath had been released for about a week and a half when this mm. first went out. Okay, Straight Jacket then. You think, so you think after a week we'd have enough for Straight Jacket? I mean, it might be the first thing on people's minds, That's too. That's true. They just yeah, it's it, also, so. like, the worst treachery ever. It's all oh, it's <laughs> ruined so many games for me. I, I, I'm cool with Straight Jacket. Yeah, me too. All right, Straight Jacket. All right. Show me, Straight Jacket. No! Oh, no! All right. Well, guys, number three, worth 12 points, was... Rotting remains. Oh, oh. Really? Definitely the wrong Who sound effect for that context. But it's it's just a little horror damage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we found our skits players. The flame. Well, they didn't choose <laughs> flame scores beer. eighty-eight points off that question. That one, uh, that one, I thought was going to be interesting because the first two, yeah, everyone gets those, but mm. treacheries are kind of. I, I find a little bit more subjective to the investigator you might be playing at oh, the time. Yeah. So I'm like, oh man, what's what's gonna hurt people? But there you go. Wait, wait hang on. Uh, how are we all on? Right. Sorry, how are we on 184? Didn't we only score? That doesn't seem right. Is yeah, it right? should be. Someone's added. Some in... Did I miss a set? 55. They scored 77 off the first category and 88 just now. Okay, my math is bad. So if someone else wants to take <laughs> over this, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping track. We're good. Okay. What do we score? Eighty. Helps, but... So you have what? One fifty-five. Okay, there. <laughs> no, hang on. One sixty-four. Six Sixty-four. There. Yeah. This is gonna Send play up great. A delicate, audio. please. Yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Is it me right, again? What me again? I think so. Indeed, I think. Damn yeah. it! All right, Peter. Are you happy to delegate now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see how this goes. Just Go hammer fist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Guys, what is the most disappointing level zero weapon that your monster killer investigator could play? <laughs> oh. oh, whoops. Nope, wrong sound effect. <laughs> Yay, there's Dang. a buzzer. <laughs> Found it. Switchblade. Switchblade. <clears throat> Show me Switchblade. Number two answer, so now uh, uh, Drawn to the Flame could actually steal this since the, that wasn't the number one answer. I mean, so Did, uh, do I get to pick one? 
Yeah, I, I was typing, you but I didn't. Uh, You're good. What? I'm gonna guess that then. What is the most disappointing level Base zero weapon card your monster killer bat? investigator could play? Baseball bat. <gasps> Unfortunately, not on there. Mythos Busters, you gonna play? Yes. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> How many points for Switchblade? Fifteen. Fools. We specialize Fools. in disappointment. <laughs> Number two at fifteen. <laughs> Scott, what's the most disappointing level zero weapon oh, card your monster killer investigator could play? <laughs> knife. Gotta be knife. Show me knife. Uh, what? No, <laughs> that was not just, the I... top five. All right, Ian. Blackjack. Blackjack. Yeah. Now you're thinking of the portals. Number one answer at forty-nine puntos. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, what's the most disappointing level zero weapon your monster killer investigator could play? I'm gonna go ahead and say um, trench knife. Trench knife, okay. Show me trench knife. Uh, what? Mm, what? Didn't make the cut. Too new. Too new. These kids haven't gotten to trench knife yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scott. Two strikes. What's the most disappointing Ouch. level zero weapon card your monster killer investigator? Ooh. I, I'm, I'm trying to choose between two, but I think I'm going to have to go with Knuckle Duster. Yeah, boy! <laughs> Show me Knuckle Duster! Yay! Whew. Number four answer for 12 points. Four? Uh, shoot, is it Ian or Nick now? I've lost Ian. Her. Ian. Oh, oh boy. Um... <laughs> Two, two strikes on the board. What's the most disappointing level zero weapon card your monster killer could play? Oh, gosh. Um, I think I think people are pretty down on the Derringer, so I'm going to say Derringer. 41 Derringer. <gasps> Whew, nice. What? On there, number five for eight <clears throat> points. All right, Nick. Jeez. No pressure. Last answer. Oh, Two strikes. <laughs> what's Space is loaded. What's better than Knuckle Duster, but worse than Switchblade? I don't... Oh, my God. The trench knife fits so nicely in there. Can we just put it in there? Yeah, it's just like a nice little trench. It, yeah. It, it would fit there. Oh, <laughs> Weapons. Bad weapons. Kukri, but that's not bad. Like, it, it has a place, I guess. Um... Not the Colt, because that's obviously... Like, that's the thing, is all these other weapons fit. You shut your mouth, BD Flory! All these other weapons fit <laughs> um, for certain investigators. Oh my god, I can't even... Now I can't... I'm blanking on weapons other than shotgun. And I'm not... <laughs> I am... I cannot say shotgun. You literally just said the name of, like, three different weapons 30 seconds ago. All right. Um, oh my god, this is the last strike, too, so I don't want to blow it. I really want to win this car. Uh, trust yeah, don't blow feelings. it. Trust my feelings. Yeah. All right. That worked in the past. Uh, Kukri. <laughs> Kukri. Show me Kukri. Kukri. <gasps> oh, <yeah>! number, three <laughs> answer. number three answer for 14 points. Uh, Mythos Busters sweeps the category. Nice one. I love that you put that in there, and our first two Drawn to the Flame episodes were on weapons. <laughs> 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 testing your memory uh guys if it's any consolation knife and trench knife were numbers six and seven hmm. mm. okay i guess knife has gotten a little bit better because it has yeah, yeah your trench yeah, knife for york trench knife is a good offhand weapon i feel yeah just me mm, yeah just you <laughs> i haven't actually played right. it so all right anyway moving on all right guys who's up uh i'm up for the the flamers that's our new uh, team name <laughs> nick were you just up you were so it's i was yep oh no not all right rage scott scott and frank <laughs> Rage Scott. all right so are you guys ready to type yes mm -hmm. guys what's a card that might be sold at a store called fast clues now <gasps> Frank! Um, I put working a hunch. Working a hunch. 
Show me working a hunch. On there for number two. Scott, you got a chance to steal if you can get the number one answer. Okay, so do I have to do the one that I typed? Yep. Okay. Uh, deduction? Deduction. Oh. Number one answer. Yes. Oh, wow. Mythos Busters, are you going to play? Yes. I think so. What are the points okay. on these guys? Uh, deduction is worth 49, Oof. working a hunch, 18. Though you guys don't wow. score the 18. Right. So the card that right. gives you a clue and is fast wasn't the top scoring answer <laughs> on how you get to the <laughs> I find that very funny. <laughs> All right. Uh, Nick, what's a card that might be sold at a store called Fast Clues now? Well, I really want to say deduction level two, but I don't think that's going to fly. <laughs> Um, so fast clues now, fast clues now. We got deduction, working a hunch. Um, I'm going to say, uh, look what I found. Look what I found. Ooh. Hey, look what I found on the board. That is number five worth ten points. Five? Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> hmm. Ian, what's a card sold at a store called Fast Now? Fast Clues oh, Now, rather? Shoot. Fast now clues. The only one I can think of because it's on my mind a lot lately is art student. Mm -hmm. So I'll go with that. Art student. Art student. Ooh, oh, right, we're strike one. Ooh. Scott. I guess she's not fast, just reliable. <laughs> well, seeing as we were just talking now. about uh, Yorick, I'm gonna have to go with Grave Digger Shovel. Show me Grave Digger <laughs> Shovel. Ooh, what? not on there. Strike two. All right, Nick. I'm I'm a little ashamed that I'm the one who has to say this because I never play Mystic, but Drawn to the Flame. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> drawn to the Flame! Correct, number four for ten points. All right, so then I think that's Ian... One answer left on the board, two strikes. Oh, no God. pressure. <laughs> um, I guess... A card sold at a store called Fast Clues now. Fast Clues, so it has to be multiple clues. I guess I'll stick with the mystic theme and say Right of Seeking, then. Right of Seeking! Oh. Oh. Strike three, drawn to the flame. You guys can discuss for a steal here. Well, what do you think, Frank? What's a card sold at a store called Fast Clues Now? My mind's going to evidence early on. Well, couldn't we say Rex? Yeah, I, I wondered as well, could you say an investigator? So, like, I think we've got, say, maybe Rex art student? They've said art student already. Oh, they said art student. Well, then I guess, what did you say again? Or evidence is an option. Evidence. It's mm. not that played, but I mean that's it is. But that's also fast. fast. It's literally yeah. fast, and it gives you a clue now. I don't know. You, uh, your your team captain, you can pick. Oh, you <laughs> you've got a lot better answers than I have, so I'm happy for you to <laughs> to wade in with what you think. I, I mean, if you want to, should we just say Rex then? Rex gets a lot of clues very quickly. Yeah. 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 Well, why don't we Rex, try that? Rex Murphy. Yeah, let's try yeah. it. Let's lock it in. Rex Murphy, eh? All right. Show me Rex Murphy. Ah, oh, nice. Oh, Rex oh, Murphy. Well done, Peter. <laughs> Number three for 13 points. So, Drawn to the Flame actually steals that whole round. 100 points. What? We get all the points? Woo. We steal the whole oh, round for getting one answer? Ye yep. Man, we should wow. keep going second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah do that please. after they did all the hard work as well <laughs> so yeah as you guys probably as everyone was talking about I, I worded that very specifically to try to get people to, to see the fast clues thing but it was definitely everyone also heard quick clues now with Rex and, and deduction so always uh, 
evidence and what was the Shovel. evidence was like number six just oh. fyi oh interesting i was thinking lock right. picks would be up there but <laughs> you know i don't even know if anyone picked lock picks just because uh... it changed the game for anyway let's just i keep <laughs> diving into other conversations <laughs> <laughs> all right guys last category in the regular round here please send someone up oh it's, it's okay, me again isn't it's it me yeah go for it peter Sorry. (laughs) 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 Apparently, that's the short theme on this soundboard. (laughs) What's the long one? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Everyone's like, no, he'll do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry, I've completely lost track of who's at the podium. Who we got? Me. And me. All right. Ian and Peter. Guys, <clears throat> who's a unique ally who would most likely ruin a good party? <sighs> Go, 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 get something out there! He, he asks. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I lost it because I was playing the theme. Wrong one. Oh, Peter. No, right. no, yeah. No, that was the right one. Peter. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I forgot how to say it as well. Uh, well yep. I'm, I'm sort of regretting this already, but uh, Renfield? David Renfield. What, you think he's going to he's gonna get all gloom I mean, and doom and just yeah, kind of bring it all it. down? Yeah, that's it. He's just going to bring all that doom in there, and that's not what we wanted a party. Well, and he brings the bugs, too. Yeah. Mm, delicious sure, nibbles. It, just, just, it <laughs> smells like fennel for some reason. No one knows that. <laughs> David Renfield. Ooh, oh. number three answer worth 22 points. So, Ian, if you can get number one or number two, you guys can um, play the category. Okay, I'll say Arcane Initiate. <laughs> arcane, <laughs> just because she's so emo? <laughs> Did you say it doesn't have to be unique? Yeah, you know. Oh yeah, it does. Ha- Sorry, it is oh. a unique ally who would most likely ruin a good party. Um. So am I stuck with my answer, or can I answer? Again? <laughs> that was my. Just mistake. give her a name, <laughs> Susan Jenny, <laughs> the arcane <laughs> initiate. Um. Okay, Jenny I'll go with funny. Alyssa Graham then. Alyssa Graham. Number five answer Ooh, oh, at geez. fourteen. So drawn to the flame. Are you guys gonna play it? <laughs> so I just gave. Or are you one. gonna explore this new strategy you have? Well, what do you reckon, Peter? I, d- I don't know. I honestly have no idea. Like I want to just answer more questions, so I feel like we play it. Okay. Cool. But yeah. Can you, can, <laughs> That's a good can way you of think doing of it. Literally any other ones that might fit this category. Um. Well, we'll do our same strategy. I'll just answer garbage, and you can kind of clean up. Okay, I'll give the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll, we'll play it, Sean, please. Who's a unique ally who would most likely ruin a perfectly good party? Um, I'm going to go a little bit left field here and say Lita Chantler, the zealot. Ooh. <laughs> Show me Lita. Oh, come Ooh, on, people. She'd burn your oh, house down. She would not be a riot at a party. Yeah. She'd just be hanging out suspiciously by the gas stove. <laughs> All right. Peter, who's a well, unique ally who would most likely ruin a good party? I've got a couple of ideas, but I think I'm going to go. Uh, this isn't a disparaging comment of any men of the cloth, but I think the last person you want when you know the booze is flowing is is a priest so i'm going to say brother xavier <laughs> <laughs> brother xavier oh, number one there answer we go. for 20 wow. Wow. <laughs> wow nice I did pizza not <laughs> i didn't X think is apparently not going to give it to you <laughs> <laughs> X don't, X take, don't it take it from you oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right back to frank Who's a unique ally who would most likely ruin a perfectly good party? Mm. Mm, mm, mm. 
You got one spot on the board left. No, no two, two, two spots. spots two spots. Board. Yep, yep. Number two and number four left. Um, nice one about this one is the pool is actually pretty small. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm just the only thing I'm thinking is trying. I feel like I'm very out of sync with the <laughs> the people who've answered these. Maybe, maybe I'm being too hard on myself. You mean people who go to parties, Frank? Sorry. You mean you out of sync with people who go to parties? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna guess Doctor Milan Christopher because he's into bugs. He's a big old nerd. <laughs> he and Renfield hang out by the yeah, <laughs> yeah. by this whatever's at parties. Show me Doctor Christopher. Oh, Ooh, unfortunately not. Damn. There. Apparently. Smelling like Migo viscera is is a thing that people enjoy. He has such interesting stories. <laughs> All right, Peter. Two strikes. Well, again, two answers again, there's left. A, there's a few that I think it could be. Um, I don't know. There's there's one. There's a few I can rule out. Just you know, because they look like they'd be great fun. I think. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna work a hunch I've got and say the red glove man. <laughs> wow, the red glove man. <laughs> you never know if he's coming or not. Well, exactly. Yeah, he, was never, he, was, he, was he ruins a good party because he just doesn't show up. He was never there. <laughs> red glove man. Oh, Ooh, number four heck? answer. Sixteen wow. points. Damn. Okay, Frank. Damn. So there's someone, That's it, isn't it? More popular than Renfield. Oh, no, there's one more. Less popular than than um, Professor X. Oh, Brother Xavier. <laughs> there you go. That's not his name. <laughs> That's what I call him. <laughs> Who is a unique ally. Would most likely ruin a good party. Ruin a good party. I'm gonna guess someone... Dreadful, like Joey the Rat Vigil. Joey the Rat Vigil. Can anyone even remember that card? I mean, (laughs) I did once you said it. Yeah. So yeah. All right. Show me the rat. Yes! Wow, I can't you believe it! Oh. Are you 23 Sh- points. You're not just doing that for sympathy yet. for me, Sean. No, oh, no, I am incredible. amazed that you got yes! that. I thought, I thought no one would guess that one. I was amazed that that hit number yeah. so I was. All, like, all the rogue said. allies are great at putting. <laughs> yes, That's what yes, I was yes, thinking. Exactly, I was going to no, guess he, Leo as a, a joke. He's a snitch. <laughs> <laughs> he's a snitch, though, isn't he? So if, 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 you're there, if you're there, like, you know, I don't know, doing something slightly less than legal... Joey's gonna sell you out. Damn, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. Well, I was thinking Charles Ross Esquire because he's just gonna sue everybody. <laughs> I was for like the first three rounds. I was like, beat cop, beat cop, beat cop. Then I'm like, wait a minute, he's not unique. Damn it. <laughs> All right, guys. So that ends the normal rounds. So we currently sit drawn to the flame at 365 points because of that massive steal, and Mythos Busters at a paltry 200. So now we move Ouch. into, we're going to do a little modified fast money here. We're going to let both teams play fast money. So here's the deal, though. Um, basically, everyone's going to have to go on mute but me and the person who's playing, just because I don't mm. have 16 billion questions to burn on this. Mm. So, uh, guys, each person is going to, or sorry, each team is going to pick two people. So Mythos Busters, you're just going to have to pick someone who sits out from fast money. Who's been the worst? <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. Who's been the worst? <laughs> Probably, Probably me. me. Am I okay? Am I sitting out? Well, who's up first? Is that one from each team? Yep. Um, I'll go first if you can explain to me how it works. <laughs> yep, I, I definitely will. <laughs> Scott, All right, so Scott will sit out. That's <laughs> okay. So. so Everyone but Frank, go ahead and deafen your uh, your headphones. You can go ahead and move into the mod chat if you want to chat for a while. Otherwise, you can just do whatever. I'll message in that group that we have set up when you're ready to come back in. Okay. So occupy yourself oh, for a little bit. 
I guess I'm going first. Let's be me and Frank here for for a moment. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I have to leave, too. Bye. Bye, Nick. Hi, Sean. How are you? How's your day? I'm I, I'm doing pretty well. You guys you guys have been rocking it. I'm I'm hoping my boys have my back here cuz uh, it's not looking too good at the moment. Okay, so fast money. Very similar premise, but basically it's rapid fire. So I'm going to give you five categories and you're going to give me your best guess. Then Peter's going to come in and give his best guesses. And uh, if he guesses the same thing that you do, uh, he'll get a little buzzer. He'll get a second try. This is like that video uh, that you this, sent me of the guy breaking down this, at the buzzer yes. noise. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I I linked when we were setting this up. I linked the clip of the end of the "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia" episode where they play Family Fight, and it's amazing. And, and anyway, I feel yes, like exactly that the guy with that they were the buzzer. Doing. Just even in the easy <laughs> rounds, I felt that way. So. Ooh. Hang All on, right. Peter, in the, Peter in the chat wants to know if he should unmute and undeafen himself. Oh yeah, no, oh, no, yeah, he's I'm, in the mod chat. Out of this yeah, channel, so. Okay, cool. Yep. We good, we good. Okay, right, so, so five categories, I'm giving you five answers fairly quickly. You're giving me your best single answer for each okay. category. <clears throat> Alright. And I'm going to just go ahead and, for shits and giggles, put like... 40 seconds on the clock. We've got a little bit of lag. we got more technical difficulties than they do on the regular show, but I still want there to be a little bit of pressure for this. So okay. Here we go. I'm ready. Nope, not seven minutes. Let's, let's delete that guy. 40 seconds on the clock. All right, here we go. Getting to the questions would probably be helpful. All right. A question that would make you go insane through repetition if you stumbled onto the Arkham forums. Oh, d two cores or one? Do I need two cores to play this game? Okay. A card you'd likely find in an Agnes deck. Shriveling. All right. Pound for pound, the best ally in the game. Poor uh, Dr. Milan Christopher. All right. An investigator who definitely has spare weapons stowed around their home. Mark Harrigan. Okay. And oh, sorry, no, I've I've been pausing. Uh, the best investigator, no qualifiers. Whoa, oh my word. Um, Jenny. Jenny. All right. <laughs> it's the kind Ooh, of question right, you then want to justify on a podcast. Now, the reason I've chosen nope, Jenny... Yep, no, see, that, <laughs> yeah. That's why I specifically said no qualifiers. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. All right. Okay, wow, that was very we'll painful. In... <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll go ahead and uh, run through them here. So, a question that would make, make you go insane through repetition if you stumbled onto the Arkham forums... You said, do I buy one cores or two? Number one answer for 56 points. A card you'd likely find in an Agnes deck. You said, shriveling. Oh, whoops, there we go. <laughs> no, number one answer Give me for 41 anything points. Anything but the, the nasty noise is fine by me. <laughs> All right, an investigator who has spare weapons stowed around their home. You said Mark Harrigan. Number one answer, 42 points. Have I really just got pound three number ones in a row? You sure wow. did. You're bringing it now. When everyone right, else can't hear pound, me. The best... <laughs> <laughs> the only... Damn. Don't worry, it'll be on display. Pound for pound, the best ally in the game. You said Dr. Milan Christopher. Number three for 19 points. Oh, okay. The best investigator, no qualifiers. You said Jenny Barnes. Number three is answer as well for 18 points. Okay, cool. All right, not too bad, not too bad. So we'll bring, uh, we'll bring Peter back in. Hey, Peter. Hi, Peter. Hello. All right, 
So, so Frank has uh, has gone through his round. He did pretty well. Oh, no. Um, so to kind of explain the premise to you here, we're going to go through in quick succession five different questions. You're just going to give me your best answer. Okay. If you guess something that Frank already guessed, I'm going to give you a little buzzer, and you get a second guess on that one. You can also always pass on a question. Uh, we're going to put, we'll say, 45 seconds on this one because i realized as as we went through with frank that i have really long wordy questions it was also it was also definitely some lag sean as well because i felt like i was answering immediately and then there was like silence at your end all right screw it we'll just we'll just skip the clock but you only get one answer okay that's fine all right here we go are are, are you ready peter Uh, i am ready yes a question that would make you go insane through repetition if you stumbled onto the arkham forums um what should i buy next okay a card you'd likely find in an agnes deck forbidden knowledge nope sorry you might have cut out Did you uh, say uh, something? Uh, forbidden knowledge forbidden knowledge okay an investigator who definitely has spare weapons stowed around their house <laughs> Uh, oh, this is a difficult one. I reckon, uh, Zoe. Zoe, okay. Pound for pound, the best ally in the game. (sighs) Ooh, um, Milan Christopher. Oh, no. Frank guessed that one, try again. Oh, he guessed it, right, that's alright then. Um... Oh, uh, Leo De Luca. Leo De Luca. All right. The best investigator. No qualifiers. Rex. Rex? Rex Murphy. Okay. Good round. Good round. All right. So, a question that would make you go insane through repetition if you stumbled onto the Arkham forums. You said, what else should I buy? That was the number five answer for seven points. Ooh, okay. Nice. A card you'd likely find in an Agnes deck. You said Forbidden Knowledge. Correct. Number two answer, 24 Ooh. points. An investigator who definitely has spare weapons sewed around their home. You said Zoe Samaras. Or Samaras. Still not sure how that's pronounced. <laughs> that is correct for 30 points. Number two answer. Ooh, nice. Pound for pound, the best ally in the game. You said... The Mississippi Manatee, Leo DeLuca. Correct. Number two for uh, 26 points. The best investigator, no qualifiers. You said Rex, or Tyrannosaurus Rex Murphy. (laughs) Number one answer for 46 points. Surely everyone's going to say that. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so if I'm, uh, I'll do some quick math here while we bring in uh, the Mythos Busters representative. Nice round, Peter. That was that was pretty. Yeah, good. well done. It, I, so yeah, these how guys did have that... their work cut out for them? Yeah. I I got the number one answer for the first three. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like oh, we've can... done well there. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. So I'm doing a quick. Hi Nick. Hello. Hi Nick. All right. Thank you ready for some fast money. Uh, you know sure. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, I do. So I just give answers, and then then Ian will have to. Try um, and match. Well, you're both trying to just give the top answer. Ian will come behind and try to play cleanup if you get all the number ones. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. So no. But I either way, you just give one answer for each question. Okay. Yes. So here we go. A question. That would make you go insane through repetition if you stumbled onto the Arkham forums. Uh, um, jeez. Uh, why is Wendy so bad? <laughs> A card you'll likely find in an Agnes deck. Uh, forbidden knowledge. An investigator who definitely has spare weapons around their house. Zoe. Pound for pound, the best ally in the game. Uh, Leo. The best investigator. No qualifiers. 
Rex. All right, all right. Good round. Question that would make you go insane through... Rep- <laughs> Actually, I just realized now the listeners are going to have to hear this like four times, but hopefully hopefully that's okay because we're doing it. Question that would likely make you go insane through repetition if you stumbled onto the Arkham forums. You said, why is Wendy so bad? Uh, Unfortunately, not in the top five. Yeah. That's such a broad... <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> A card you'd likely find in an Agnes deck. You said Forbidden Knowledge. Alright, that's the number two answer for 24 points. An investigator who definitely has spare weapons stowed around their house. You said Zoe Samaras. That's correct. Number two for 30 points. Oh, my lucky pound for pound, two. the best ally in the game. You said Leo De Luca. Number two answer, 26 points. <laughs> what? Number two, man. <laughs> the best investigator, two, two, two. no qualifiers. You said Rex Murphy. Nope, nope. Number one answer, 46 points. All nice right. one, Nick. Thank you all. Who have you got against Wendy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I t- <laughs> That question just, like, stunned me into silence. I couldn't come up with anything. <laughs> That's all right. All right, so we're going to debrief on all these uh, when uh, either Scott or Ian finishes their round here because there were some fun other answers amidst the uh, the top ones. I was going to say, I have a, I have a couple <laughs> That's that I That's always the said, case. Yeah, all right, Ian, are you, are you fast money for uh, round two here? I am, yeah. I'm ready. As ready Scott, as Scott, I only now just realized that we didn't have to have you leave at all. If you're oh yeah, kind of no, I uh, in fast money. I yeah, I realized that like a minute in, I was like, oh, it'll give me something to do to listen to while editing. <laughs> so all right, <laughs> all right, Ian. Nick had a okay. good run. You ready for it? Oh god, <laughs> that means it's gonna be harder for me. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Okay, you're familiar with the rules, right? Don't need to recap those. I am familiar. All right. Ian, a question that would make you go insane through repetition if you stumbled onto the Arkham forums. How many corsets do I need? Okay. A card you'd likely find in an Agnes deck. Uh, No, I'm sorry. No, no, you're good, you're good, you're good. Okay, forbidden knowledge. Forbidden knowledge. Oh. Try again. (laughs) Um, Shriveling. Shriveling. An investigator who definitely has spare weapons stowed around their house. Zoe. Okay, Roland. Pound for pound, the best ally in the game. Ooh, Peter Sylvester. The best investigator, no qualifiers. Rex. Nope, nope. Okay, (laughs) I had a feeling that was going to happen. Agnes. All right, excellent. That was going to take me a little while to tally up the score here because I didn't have a good system in place beforehand. So let's debrief. A question that would make you go insane through repetition if you stumbled onto the Arkham forums. Oh, nope, lost my soundboard. Hang on. (laughs) <laughs> it's a website there were no good apps it's gonna it's gonna add like 20 it's minutes to Ian, the podcast you said how many cores do i buy no nope. play that please if you would so, yeah, okay there we go oh my god number one answer for 56 points yeah nice a card you'd likely find in an agnes deck ian you said Shriveling. Number one answer, 41 nice. points. Ian. <laughs> An investigator who definitely has spare weapons stood around their house. You said Roland. Number three answer for 11 points. Okay, okay, not bad. <laughs> pound for pound, the best ally in the game. Ian, you said Peter Sylvester. That is correct. 32 points. Number one answer. Wow. <laughs> People like them some Peter. The best investigator. No qualifiers. Ian, you said Agnes 
Baker. Correct. Number two answer, 21 points. This is going to be incredibly yes. close. Yeah, this is going to be, gonna be super close. <laughs> okay. Um, so just, just to kind of run through, you guys vamp for a minute while I tally up points. So I totally like that first question. I I totally lost it. Like what what's a question on Reddit that would make you go insane? I was like, I don't know. So I just said, why is Wendy so bad? Oh. Yeah, I didn't score anything. Oh. So that's I was thinking kill us. What's the game but... dying? <laughs> yeah. yeah, is this game dead? <laughs> These novellas are killing the game. Uh, but no, but I think we got number one and two for the rest no, you, of them. So you, we... you didn't get um, oh, no, Mark Harrigan, Weapons Around the House. Yeah. 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 I was pleased with uh, yeah, that. He's, like, yeah. Yeah. he's an ex-soldier. He's like got these, like, what do you call it? He's shell-shocked. He's got guns around just in case the, the yeah. Nazis come back or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, no. He was World War One. Yeah. It was <laughs> Kaiser's troops. Ka- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There you oh, go. What, yeah. oh, what are the what are the Brits call them? The Jerry's? <laughs> sure. I, I gotta go back know. and watch that Blackadder season. <laughs> the Jerry's. <laughs> I was just gonna watch that uh, Arrested Development quick parody, uh, a very polite <laughs> dust up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Oh man, I'm surprised. I'm honestly surprised that shriveling was the number one answer for Agnes. Like. Forbidden knowledge, and my second one yeah. would have been Peter mm. Sylvester. I was exactly that. the like, same because they would be the first two I put in. But I guess like you yeah. always put Trivling in as well. Yeah, yeah, I was just like, okay, what? what? Sure. <laughs> like you could you could run her just without for forbidden a... knowledge if you wanted to, but you probably couldn't run her without Trivling because what would she do? Yeah, probably not a good I don't idea. Know. I, I went forbidden knowledge, and then I would have right. gone for Pete if I'd had to guess again. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I was thinking too. And I wouldn't have said Pete for pound for pound the best ally. Like after Leo, my next bet was like uh, I was thinking I don't know, Milan. We we guessed two and three, Milan and Leo, and I was yeah. like, who's better oh. than Leo? It's got to be Duke. But mm. oh. that was all right, yeah, guys. Was... Fast money scores are this in. Is a big man on Here we go. Mythos Busters scored two hundred and eighty-seven points. Oh, nice. Drawn to the flame. Scored 309. Ooh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. Wow. Close. All right. So uh, a question that would make you go insane through repetition if you stumbled onto the forum. How many cores do I buy is number one. Anyone got a postmortem guess at number two? This one is the game. Dying. Like it makes total sense, but I, I did not see it coming. Uh, oh, is number two answer. Yeah, go ahead. I, this, is, this is for pride now. Okay. Oh, I was just going to say, can I get the promo investigators without the no- novella? Uh, when's Marie Number two answer out? is, where is card 117? Oh, yeah. Huh. <laughs> 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 That's a good one. Number three is, how is Hunter Prey, or how does Hunter and Prey work? Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And number four, uh, is the game dying? <laughs> yeah. And then... Yep. That and was then number four? five is what else should I buy? Nice. Mm. 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 What about All right. I got a mis- like oh my one of my act cards is misprinted. Remember when they did the weird text? Oh yeah, that was brilliant. And everyone yeah, was yeah. like, I got a misprint. Oh yeah. 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 If that scenario yeah. had just come out, that would have been up there, I'm sure. A card you'd likely find in an Agnes deck. Number one, shriveling, of course. Number two, forbidden knowledge, of course. No one touched anything else. Number three <laughs> was Peter Sylvester. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Right of seeking, yeah. maybe. Number four or... is delve too deep. Mm-hmm. That's down to and you, number Sean. Number five <laughs> killed me. <laughs> no, no, there were six people who voted for that. I'll have you know. Uh, number five, Drawn to heirloom of Viperborea. <laughs> <laughs> I love the cheek that is implied yeah. in that answer. <laughs> yeah, and you'd always right, find it in the deck because has... no one is drawing for that. Yes, card. I mean it's it's a hundred percent correct answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> an investigator who definitely has spare weapons stowed around their house number one mark harrigan yes number two zoe samaras number three roland banks number four skids o'toole mm, sure yeah and number yeah. five jenny barnes yeah that makes sense anybody who can take your <laughs> it turns out 
pound for pound the best ally in the game. Number one, Peter Sylvester. Num <laughs> number two, Leo. the Mississippi Manatee himself, Leo DeLuca. Number three, Dr. Milan Christopher. Number four, Duke. Ah, uh, he good was up there. Good, good, good. Yeah. Who's <laughs> a good boy? Number five. X gonna give it to you. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Brother yeah. Xavier. All right, the best investigator, no qualifiers. Number one, to no one's surprise, Tyrannosaurus Rex Murphy. Yep. Number two, Agnes Baker. Number three, Jenny Barnes. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Number four, Ashcan Pete, though I think about half the people who voted for Ashcan actually entered Duke, which I appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> And strangely enough, there was a single vote for Diana Stanley uh, that made the cut. Uh, look at that. That's I wonder cool. where that came from. That's, that's thing. <laughs> All right. So as much as it pains me to do it, Drawn to the Flame emerges victorious from this points fest at, uh, God, what is this? A lot. 600, to a <laughs> 674 points to Mythos Busters 487 points. So guys, Whoa. congratulations! Whoa. Wow. You win this round yeah. of the Blood Feud. Well, it was all. It... <laughs> Good job, <laughs> nerds! It was all down to that one steer, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, maybe it that was. Definitely didn't yeah. hurt, but that was only a hundred points. You guys definitely. Uh, well, it was, made it's, up some other points. It's a two hundred point swing, though, right? Yeah, exactly. That's the other guys. Yeah, that, a steal is huge mm -hmm. in this game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, fun story. There were a couple questions I had out there on the survey that I only realized in hindsight were way narrow. Uh, one of them was an investigator who has the longest rap sheet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw the, answer, I saw the answers in. roll in for that. I'm like, oh, well, freaking duh. <laughs> uh, the, okay, so here we go. The only one I didn't use because just I didn't want this to go three hours. An investigator who is definitely voted most unique in high school. Uh, Lola. It's oh. going to be Lola, surely. Oh. Lola. What? Um, Lola? Yeah. yeah. yeah it's Norman be Lola. Withers has that amazing beard in high school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lola's the number one answer for 37 points. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, Wendy probably didn't go to high school. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. There were a couple of people who yeah. voted Wendy. I'm like, oh, did you read the question? Yeah. <laughs> Akachi was number two. <laughs> yeah. Agnes was number three. Really? Sure. Oh, the Safina mistakes. was number four. And Ashcan Pete was number five. And I would debate whether Ashcan Pete finished high school, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. He was hanging yeah, around the high school. Smell <laughs> the great smokes thing about for a high school girl. This was just last week. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we we all had a joke that we all said at the same time, but it were different jokes. That's awesome. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for playing Family Feud. That was that was fun, even though we didn't win. I guess. <laughs> thank Sean, you so much, thank you so much for Sean. Thank you so much for hosting it because that seemed like it was an incredible amount of work to. <laughs> it was it was a little bit of legwork and try and but destroy I, I, I my mind. sanity with those noises. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be hearing it in your sleep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that that wraps it up for the the segment proper. Uh, I suppose we we wanted to move it into a little bit of tentacle time here. And I think before the show, we had kind of discussed this being the the last Jedi discussion. So let's do a quick normal tentacle time. If everyone wants to mention like one thing that they're that they're doing otherwise right now, uh, Peter, what what else you got? What's grabbing you right now? Oh wow. Okay, I wasn't prepared for this. Uh, let me think. Uh, um, yeah, I have forty k stuff. I'm painting forty k stuff. Uh, oh, you're into minis, huh? Yeah, Ooh. well, I've got back in with the 8th edition, which is uh, was out earlier this year, I think, middle of this 8th year. 8th edition? That's how far they are? I know. Well, Lord. it makes me feel really old, because I last really played in 3rd edition, or the, the <laughs> very beginning of 4th edition, mm. uh, which is like 15 years ago. Yeah. So well, they changed I, yeah, a few things. They, they tweaked a lot of stuff. So everything from 4th to 7th is sort of compatible. Uh, so in 8th, they've totally refreshed the rule set so um they're releasing new codices at a, at a rate of knots uh but the two armies I'm, I'm starting so i've got some necrons which are like tomb kings in space so undead robots 
Uh, and then some orcs as well, who are just orc, orcs, you know, green green lads. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's good fun. I've got a few people locally playing, um, and I got some cool new uh, brushes and stuff for Christmas as well. So yeah, that's that's. Did me, you get into really. conquest at all? The LCG. Uh, yeah, I I did. Uh, <laughs> uh, I sold it. I actually ended up my so my friend um, Evan is is just a ridiculously good LCG player. Uh, he plays every LCG. Last year, he won the Grand he Grand Slam at, at regionals. So he won a regional at Star Wars, Netrunner, Thrones, and Conquest. Wow. wow. Yeah. He's always that guy. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's got like a little LCG cave in his house. Uh, but anyway, so he was the only person I really played against uh, at Conquest. Um, and I, I won one game ever. <laughs> wow! Because <laughs> the very first game I played against him, I won, and I was like, "Oh, this is great!" And then every time I played after that, uh, yeah, he obviously was going easy on me in that first time. Uh, <laughs> that was kind of a contributing factor to why I bowed out too, because I, we got into a league when I started playing, and it was literally a league of all the people who <laughs> podcasted about conquest. That was so just that was like the worst <laughs> league ever for you and Brandon to join in, because like six hardcore players who play it every single day and then you and Brandon were like so wait what do I do on this turn <laughs> yep yep that's pretty much it and <laughs> coupled with that my my streak of going strong picking the jankiest ass faction in whatever competitive game I play mm-hmm. definitely went strong I loved me some Tau and uh, I, I, they just I, they didn't win things when I played <laughs> well the other problem was I was also uh, playing Netrunner at the time and like two competitive LCGs is, is yeah a bit that'll too divide much. your attention for yeah. sure. So Arkham, it, well, it was fine while I was still playing Netrunner because it's very different. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. and you can't play Conquest now anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard they're they're pulling all the cards from everybody. Yeah, and burning it's pretty them. rough. Harsh, Nick, but... ever the advocate for trying to keep dead games alive. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Frank, what you got going on? What's grabbing you right now? Um, I'm a, a a weird kind of fellow, and I'm really into Dwarf Fortress. Does anyone know Dwarf Fortress? How <laughs> yeah. weird! What? Yeah, I'm no, nuts about Dwarf Fortress still, and I used to write um, on their wiki and things like that. So when I have time, which isn't that often these days, and when I'm not... I mean, the main thing I'm playing is Arkham, and now that I'm recording live plays of Arkham, that eats up lots of time. But when I'm not doing that, I sometimes fire up Dwarf Fortress zoom into my current fortress you now get them um, they've added this feature where people will turn up at your fortress and ask to to join it they're not migrants though they're they're sort of um monster hunters or mercenaries or things like that mm. so i have I, I sort of have this steady flow of little characters trying to come and work in my fortress which is quite fun yeah it's a it's a really weird thing i don't know anyone else in the flesh really who plays it ever and i only only ever play it occasionally but um it's a really, yeah, fun fun game. Do you, do you, Nick? You know it. Do you, do Ian, Sean? You know Dwarf Fortress. I'm vaguely familiar with it. I've never played it. I just I know the name. And it used to be. Uh, didn't it start out as a, a tabletop game of some sort? No, 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 no. It's this. It, okay. it, the guy is that the one that had all the issues when they re-released it with like a pay structure no also no <laughs> that's, that's yeah oh, so keep guessing yeah guys. so keep this guessing. guy this guy is it's it's made by two brothers but the main designer the 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 tech guy is called tarn adams uh he has a phd in mathematics and then kind of as far as people can tell had something like a mental breakdown or definitely didn't want to join the world of academia and didn't really want to join the world of work and always had made games with his brother Zach and they'd always sort of played role-playing games and things like that and they set out to make this this game Dwarf Fortress that it at its simplest you get seven dwarves and you have to build a fortress with them and it's uh it's mm. ASCII characters and it's sort of like a. It's the most. Thinks, in, it's the most insanely detailed game I've ever played. So, so he, he's I've been working it on it bit. since two thousand and three, and he's still working on it. He lives off donations for it. Uh, he has a plan in place for the next twenty years to try and finish the game. Like he's been working on it since two thousand and three, oh. and he's on version zero point four two. Oh, it, oh. uh, five years ago. Um, uh, MoMA in New York accepted 20 games to keep in its permanent collection of art 
And it was things like Pong and Tetris and sort of retro games that are considered works of art. And Dwarf Fortress was one of the 20 games. So it's like, oh, it's this wow. incredible artifact and it's the most wonderfully detailed game. And when, when you start the game, it creates an entire world for you with precipitation and mountain ranges and uh, volcanoes. And then it adds population to it and it has humans, elves, goblins and dwarves fighting with each other. And then it generates a history for you before you even are allowed to take the seven dwarves. So, so it's this sort of insane story engine there's, there's a couple of... Uh, Frank, I've got a great example of one of the... the so there's loads of emergent bits of gameplay that happen. Um, even just reading the patch log of the game is fascinating. And there's a great story about how um, cats... He, he wrote this this script for cats cleaning themselves. Uh, and then he <laughs> he added this thing where if things... If you ate things, then... Uh, so it would affect all animals. And, and cats would walk around in the bars uh, and the, the pubs in the dwarf settlements and get beer on their feet and then when they'd clean themselves they'd ingest the beer and get drunk so there was a <laughs> wow. it's, it's, it's uh, amazing yeah. there was a, he made the, he did this thing as well where he 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 made carp in the game the fish carp, oh yeah the but they have lethal carp they have teeth and he set them to be quite aggressive because that's what carp are like but <laughs> All of these people recorded stories of their little fisher dwarves heading to nearby rivers to fish. You know, you've just set out on your new fortress and you're, you're just, you know, doing some fishing to make sure you've got enough food. And then dwarves being dragged into rivers and torn apart by carp. And the, <laughs> it, it, it models fluid dynamics as well. So the, the river goes from blue to red. And and there's like blood yes. pouring down it, and be, you know, just so like you, for a while you never did fishing in Dwarf Fortress because it was too dangerous, and now he's like yeah. sorted that out. So it's it's like a well, ludicrous like the, game. The, the dwarves it's, would like try and they would try and wrestle the carp, but because they were both standing in the water and the carp could breathe, the dwarf eventually just drowned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, so the, the other lovely thing about it is it's it's a little bit like any of these town management games where you can't actually control what people do. Um, so games like RimWorld have been inspired by this, where you can you can say build this and work in this workshop and fell this tree, but the dwarves are all simulated individually and will do what they want to do. So you'll be like, oh no, an invasion! Pull this lever and pull up the drawbridge. And if the dwarves are all drinking beer, no one will do it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what am I? I, I, I used to play a game I, years ago called Majesty. I think it was, and that was how it was. Where it's like. I can build buildings and and you know like incentivize my guys to do stuff, but I can never guarantee they're actually going to do it. Yeah, yeah. One of my fa favorite—I think I've told this Frank this before—but one of my favorite stories is I had uh, a dwarf who would eng he would engrave walls and floors and stuff to make the dwarves have a nice uh, environment, and your engraver dwarfs will actually en engrave real scenes into the walls. And I had this oh. uh, masterwork engraver, and you could dive in and see what he'd engraved on the walls. And all he engraved was engravings of himself doing engravings. I was hoping. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping you'd say he had engravings of carp. <laughs> but th that kind of thing happens a lot. And gorillas as well. Lots of people had. Because gorillas were quite dangerous at one point. I'm sure. Yeah. And was elephants. It, it... <laughs> elephants were really dangerous. Yeah. Elephants. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Good lord. I feel the overwhelming need to try this game. So, <laughs> it's. it's um, I'll, I'll put a picture in the live chat. It, the learning curve is like nothing else. Uh, it's incredibly opaque and complicated. And yeah, so that's mm. that's that's my tentacle time. If you play Dwarf Fortress, say hi to me. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> Nick, how about you? Um, I already pretty much talked about what's been eating up my game time lately. Uh, custom Arkham stuff. So if you forgot, just rewind back to the opening of the episode. For once, I have not much else to talk about during technical time. No, so. right on. Peter, I think you got to get rolling here. Yeah, yeah. I've just, uh, Vicky's let me know we've got a sick cat. Uh, so I just need to oh. go and, uh, I won't go into details. On <laughs> sure. <laughs> you can edit this out. Fair enough. Um, uh, Was it licking itself after it walked in here? <laughs> no details. Yeah. Um, so, uh, all right. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on, man. Thank you so much for having us on. It's been really, really good fun, uh, and thanks for all the work you put into doing the, the family feud. Uh, it was, yeah, it was great. We'll yeah, see, no see you at some point. Good luck with the cat. 
<laughs> so since he quit, does that mean we win by default now? <laughs> I think that's exactly what that is. I think that's okay, how it yeah. works, yeah. Everyone vote. Four against one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, guys. Uh, where are we at? Ian, what, what you been doing? Keep... Uh, well, I actually have a bunch of stuff, but I'll keep it to one, which is uh, I've talked about Vengeance, the board game on here before, and my long wait. So that Kickstarter finally came in uh, and got to play it a couple times. So... For those who aren't familiar, this is a game with a unique theme. It's kind of themed off of like revenge movies, um, like think, like, <clears throat> think of a Kill Bill or that type where someone gets wrong. So there's a lot of cool, unique mechanics in the game. Like you start off with playing cards that basically damage you. To re it's called the wronging, which is basically the enemy gangs like like you know pulling off your nails or electrocuting you or what have you uh but basically that determines who you're going after for revenge and how you get victory points but uh i played it a couple times already i really like it one of the things i like about it and i've it's funny sometimes how board game tastes are different because i've seen a couple people say it's a little too short and for me that's like hallelujah <laughs> like <laughs> i'm so glad to have a game that's not an epic like two hour or three hour uh, this can be played solo, by the way. Um, so I was playing it solo, nice. but yeah, I'm so like I've. If there are any games that are actually going to get onto my table and displace me playing uh, Lord of the Rings or Arkham, which is like ninety to ninety five percent of what I play, it's going to be a game that's actually on the shorter end. So I think it's yep. like an hour or under an hour to play. It's 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 very quick nice. but fun. So I think this is one that actually has a chance of getting in the rotation because of that. So. Yay for shorter games that uh, <laughs> have some fun and strategy to them. So I recommend it. It should be on retail, like, end of this month, I believe. Right on. Scott? Uh, I have not had a lot of time for gaming uh, as much, uh, just because of holidays and stuff like that. However, I have caught up on one of my favorite television shows, although I don't know if it's on Netflix, so I don't know if you can call it that. Black Mirror. Um, mm, mm. Have you guys seen Black Mirror? Just I've the seen... first season. I watched an episode, the the one with Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh, I have not seen any of it yet. Okay, uh, it seems interesting. It's not good for kids. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it. So it basically it looks at how like in a kind of dystopian way how technology could affect our lives in the future and stuff, but. There are some episodes that just ask these horrendous moral questions of yourself, like, while you're watching it. And don't ever watch it while you're sad or something. Like, I don't. But, oh boy. my goodness, that show is amazing. Anyone want to chat about it, please talk to me in Off Topic. I will talk for days <laughs> about Black Mirror. You guys should all watch it. That's it. Then I suppose for my part, uh, I actually been playing a, little, a fair bit of uh, video games over the holidays i just for some reason the bandwidth i did not have a whole lot of it to to throw down arkham or lord of the rings as often as i normally would so i fired up the definitive edition of dishonored when you guys played dishonored oh i, have not I would done. love to God, it looks no fantastic <laughs> and i haven't played it it's like did you guys ever play thief back in the day yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I played classic. Yeah, I played a bit yeah of like classic thief. It's it's like Bioshock and Thief had a love baby, and it's put in this like weird, awesome, uh, alternate universe steampunk uh, setting. But it's it's not actually steampunk because in this world, uh, basically, what happened is animals are a little bit different, and they found a way to refine whale oil to the point where it's this extremely volatile fuel. So people call it whale punk as a setting. Nice. Um, <laughs> but anyway. God, I blasted through that game, and I liked it even more than I did the first time, because it's a replay. So fun, and what I found out is that Metal Gear Solid Five just made me better at stealth games. <laughs> and when you play a stealth game, being good at it is a big part of the fun. So yeah, anyway, Dishonored, if you haven't played that, it's pretty cheap, it's an older game. The remaster on uh, current consoles looks really good, because just the art style they went with was kind of stylized and shaded. Uh, <laughs> Blubberpunk BD4, yep, exactly right. So, anyway, huge props, I loved my playthrough of that game. It also does a really good job of kind of sandboxing it for you. There's so many different ways to complete these assassination missions, you can actually clear the entire game without killing anyone. Really hard, but doable. And, uh, yeah, 
I uh, I went on the low chaos side where I tried to kill as few people as possible, but there were a couple of the assassination targets that I just straight up didn't like, so they they got to die. Huh. My favorite stealth game right. was always uh, Splinter Cell, because you could do that too without killing people. Like, you could knock people mm-hmm. out and like throw them in a closet. Like, like OG Splinter Cell, like X, ex- like played... classic Xbox. Yeah, I played the first three. Yeah. Okay. I only ever played the first one, hmm. but yeah, I like yeah. that one. Those were always too realistic for me. I, I fell back on the Metal Gear Solid series. Mm. I needed some, <laughs> I needed some jank in my story. Fair. Apparently, fair. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's let's crack on into it then. Um, Star Wars. So Star Wars. Um, I spoilers for Last Jedi. Yeah, yeah. If you need that. Let's tag. let's do that. <laughs> we're, we're we're going in whole hog here. So if you haven't seen Last Jedi, uh, you probably want to turn it off. And what are you doing so I kinda, if you haven't seen it yet? Like, come on. Man. Oh, there's that too. <laughs> so I kind of want to preface this. Star Wars is like my thang. I, I'm not quite... I guess the original trilogy was really my thang. I, I fell off of following the expanded universe really closely during the prequel era, and I haven't really picked it back up in the new one. I played. I, li- I read a couple of the, um, the, the lead-up books to The Force Awakens, but I haven't done much beyond that. When I walked out of the theater for Last Jedi, I was conflicted i was i think the thing i said when i left was that it wasn't the movie i wanted but i'm not sure yet if i that means i don't like it i like it took me a long time to kind of tease apart you know the subversion of expectations from actually not liking it did did you guys have a similar experience oh i i was i was hot on it then i was cold on it then i was hot like i was back and forth like crazy um i knew at my heart, I was conflicted about it, whether or not that was a positive conflicted or a, bad, or a negative. Uh, but yeah, I just recently like kind of landed at where I think I'm going to sit for the majority of time. <laughs> I felt, <laughs> felt there's a few things. I, I was like, oh yeah, I could see how it's like some people wouldn't like that and me too. Like I wasn't great on it, but like overall, I really liked it. And I'm huge, huge Star Wars nerd. I'll preface with that as well. <laughs> so... <clears throat> For me, I was mixed as well, which is surprising because for those who know me, (laughs) usually it's like, (laughs) usually I like things. So if I was conflicted, I was like, oh, this is a strange feeling. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I'm right there with you. Which I think reflects how a lot of, like, I feel like out of any Star Wars movie or a lot of movies, that's where people are at, conflicted. I've ended up going on to the uh, positive side first after kind of thinking about it for a while and then i did get a second watch in and so i'm definitely on the positive side but it's such an interesting movie to me and i guess i should say i do of course i grew up watching star wars i love star wars i've watched it a ton but it's not necessarily like i'm up there i'm not like what you would call a star wars guy so I don't know how that shades my opinion or not. Yeah, you're but... one of those dirty Trekkies, ain't you? Yep. <laughs> that was that was my <laughs> priority growing up. So, yeah. Frank? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've... Were you, are you a giant Star Wars fan as well prior to this, or is it just kind of, um, kind of another series? I'm, I'm a big fan of the original trilogy, and we had that on video, yeah. and I grew up overseas, which is part of why I don't know about things like family feud and it was one of the few video sets we had (laughs) and my brothers and i must have watched them to death and we watched the interviews we had interviews with um george lucas at the end of them and all like i know all sorts of weird star wars facts that i shouldn't really know but um then the the prequels i wasn't really bothered about and i've not really delved any deeper into it and i i thought force awakens and rogue one were really refreshingly fun and i was i was sort of quietly excited for last jedi i would say uh, one of my brothers lives overseas now and we were trying to plan for all of us to be bed- together at Christmas to watch it and then my other brother messaged me to say he'd been to see it without us so then I was like oh wait now I should rush and huh? see it so I, I kind of I kind of yeah. I thought I, I thought I was going to see it in January but I ended up rushing to see it just before Christmas so I, I went into it without I tried to know nothing about it and I went into it with fairly low expectations I'd say and was satisfied <laughs> my low expectations were met <laughs> i'm like the most vanilla person i think um yeah i i kind of i tried to temper my expectations as well i did it with force awakens too where basically i watched the first trailer and then i went on complete lockdown i i, I visited no forums i mm-hmm. watched no other trailers 
Except for I did get surprise trailered at uh, Thor Ragnarok because they had the second one oh, at yeah. the beginning of that, yeah, yeah. so I was kind of forced mm-hmm. forced to watch it there. But you know, I first the first thing I want to put out there is I, I I have come to the conclusion that Star Wars is just so in an unfair spot because the original trilogy kind of exists in this rose colored glassed world where so many of us it was a part of our childhood and and it just kind of expanded from there and i don't think with with that being the the case that it's just so tough nothing it's it's not fair it's not fair to the new movies Mm -hmm. honestly well i think too Um, like building on that i mean like i'm a huge star wars nerd i've read the books i play the games like i've gotten myself sick on the movies um but at the core of it, I think a lot of people, they wanted more from this movie. Like, they wanted, like, deep meaning and all this stuff. But, like, at the end of the day, like, look back at those, like you said, the Star Wars in, in like, this little glass case. They were popcorn flicks when they came out, right? Like, they are like, summer blockbuster kind of, like, go see guys with laser swords and stuff like that, right? It, I don't know. I, I think the people who were really disappointed had unrealistic expectations. Yeah, they're, they're artifacts of a, of a different age of filmmaking as well. One of the things that really struck me is that they're, they're really simple films, in a way, that, that original trilogy, mm-hmm. that you can count the number of important characters really on one hand and a bit, probably. And, you know, one of the important characters doesn't get any lines, Chewie. It's, it, you know, they're really small films and small canvases, but then they, they do this clever thing where they go, oh, but it's about the fate of the entire galaxy so it must be a big deal but now the way we make films you know thor ragnarok is a great comparison film it's like got to be big canvas it's got to be the the stakes have got to be really high it's got to be the fate of the nine realms rather than just one planet you know that's just how films have the trend of blockbusters i think in the last 25 years bigger better louder Mm. Well, and yeah, no, I, I do agree that I think people who are looking for, like, this really, like, you know, a Citizen Kane level of, of kind of analysis or, or statement on life in Star Wars, like, you're, you're not getting that. It's by design from word one, like, Lucas was way into Joseph Campbell and, and kind of uh, archetypes and, and, like, it was meant to be derivative meant to be simple meant to be easily digestible star wars has never been about intricacy it's just always supposed to it's so thus far has always just been about simple ideas executed really well well that's one of the interesting things because i feel like actually out of all the star wars movies this one had the most to say which is originally why it took me a while to wrap my head around like and i actually ended up writing an article about it which i would never do about most other star wars movies because they are just simple like light versus dark good wins like etc and this one had a lot of interesting things to say about like generations and cycles and failure and all that um but i did have things to say about cycles it did have things to say about like that there were all these kind of themes going on in it that were actually interesting to think about which i don't see in any other star wars movie really but i think what kind of threw a lot of people at least from what i see i can't speak for everyone who didn't like the movie obviously and there's lots of things that go into it i can speak but i sure but i think there were a lot of issues of like uh quote unquote plot holes which i don't even like using that word because i think it's overused um but you know plot holes writing stuff and honestly those things actually don't bother me that much because i know not to be condescending co- condescending but i don't take the star wars universe that seriously like you, you you're know, not supposed to there's it's not space science wizards, fiction it's space fantasy so i think for a lot of people though how much that kind of thing bothers them determines ultimately how they're gonna feel about the movie because uh, honestly, there are there is stuff in there that you can pick apart, and for me, it doesn't bother me that much. But for if if those kind of things do bother you, then yeah, you're probably going to end up more negative about the movie. So I I still remain mixed on on how I feel about the movie, and part of it's because like it had some really cool ideas and it has some really cool scenes, but it's it's kind of like the details and execution that that kill certain parts of it for me, like. Missed opportunities, man. There are so many missed opportunities for really cool parts in that movie that they just did not take. Mm. 
See, and I, I break this film, like, when I think about how I feel about this film, and I would say that I'm mostly mixed as well, but I tend to lean negative. Um, and that's not to say I didn't like it, because I did enjoy it. And that's obviously apparent, because I, I'm, I've I'm been going back and forth so often on this. But but ultimately, what I th- when I think of The Last Jedi, I break it into three parts. And those three parts are Rey's story, Rey slash Luke's story, or Rey, Luke, Kylo, um, uh, uh, Poe and Finn, and Leia's story, and Rose, and, uh, um, the, uh, da, 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 da. the little birds I'm on sorry, the no, island? F- no, no, no. Finn and Rose are one, Poe and Leia and Holdo are another, and Luke and Rey mm-hmm. and Kylo are the third. Mm-hmm. And Luke and Kylo and Rey, like, that whole thread, from when she confronts Luke at the very beginning to when she and Kylo are are having their confrontation at the end... Like, I thought that was 100% spot on. Like, I loved every minute of that. Luke was amazing. He was exactly what I wanted him to be. He's exactly what he needed to be. I'm fine with them calling him Luke instead of Kyle Katarn, even though he should be (laughs) Kyle Katarn. Like, that's fine. That's awesome. Um, And then Holdo, like, the character of Admiral, Vice Admiral Holdo, I thought was my favorite character in the whole movie. Like, she was amazing. I loved everything about her. Um, I was very upset with uh, Poe in this movie. But it, at the same time, the decisions he was making were also in line with his character. Mm-hmm. So it was more like me getting mad at Poe rather sure. than me getting mad at the writers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but that story, like that whole line, there was a couple things where I wasn't like too... It, it, it was good, but it wasn't phenomenal. You know what I mean? Like that that story. One comparing it to the Luke side. And then the whole Finn and Rose, like I, I get what they were going mm-hmm. for. It was but so it just it, f- it was so it felt tight. yeah it felt like it's like we need something for Finn to do but we also want to characterize this new character <laughs> but it's like we want we want we need we need Finn in the movie because people like Finn and we want to introduce this new character be- because well like after Finn. that first movie yeah, he was a very like charismatic Finn. character yeah, he's okay <laughs> but the point is that like this movie is like not only is it about subverting expectations but it's also about challenging traditional Star Wars heroes which is amazing. Yeah. I love that. I love that they're going for diversity and I love that they're going for representation and Rose is a great character, but I wish she existed inside of an arc that felt like it belonged in this film and not like it belonged in a comic book to be released alongside the mm-hmm. film. You know what I mean? Like that whole Canto Bite stuff I it didn't result in anything lasting in this movie. You know what I mean? It would almost be like if everybody went to Cloud City and Empire only for literally nothing to happen, for Lando to stay at Cloud City and for everybody else to go back to wherever. You know, whatever. Is that the casino like planet it, that you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Canto Bite. Yeah. Mm. It just, it, it had, it explored some cool ideas, but it didn't, like, those ideas were resolved and didn't have any repercussions to the final act of the film, which is honestly my least favorite part about this movie. I felt like once they got to whatever that that rebellion, that old uh, resistance base, mm-hmm. everything from there on, while it was really cool and really good, didn't like that okay. didn't need to be in there. Yep. No, well, I think they, I agree that they they misstepped on that piece, but I feel like it only a few changes and that that whole that whole sequence could have been made so much better. Like, okay, sure, why? Why, why did we need Luke to just all of a sudden have this crazy power to have a substantial force hologram? Why couldn't he just come back? Like, what purpose does it serve that he decided to get involved again? Because he would have died when they shot the guns at him, him, Sean. Because... (laughs) Okay, no, 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 no. You know what is established in the Star Wars universe? The force can block laser bolts. You know what's not established in the Star Wars universe? Substantial force holograms. <laughs> the because he, the reason why it's like that is because uh, from from my understanding of the film is that because this whole film is based on the foundation of breaking the traditions of Star Wars and of going yeah. everything that you think of when, when you think sense. of But well no, and that's that's the that's the ultimate uh summarization of my dislike of what I dislike about this movie is that that foundation of subverting expectations is admirable and i appreciate that they went for it but the film around this mm-hmm. foundation needs to be air t- 
tight mm-hmm. in order for that to sell. And it wasn't airtight. And that's not to say it was a bad movie. I think it was a good movie, but I just feel like there were there were issues that that would have been easier to like almost like low hanging fruit. You know what I mean? Like yes. they should have been able to deal with this stuff. And that would have made everything else literally a hundred times. Okay, you know, you know what? I I draw a line, a parallel, or rather, I suppose this would be perpendicular. So you know the scene in Force Awakens when they're in, they're, they're on Starkiller Base, and uh, uh, Kylo has just thrashed Finn, and is trying to get the lightsaber out of the snow, mm-hmm. and it flies past him and goes to Rey. Like anyone who's seen Star Wars knows exactly what's going to happen in that scene. It's so predictable. Right. It's so tropey. But it's so well done, you don't care. Like No, but a lot of people did care. Well, those people are wrong. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. No, and I'm not disagreeing with you. But I'm saying that if you if you're making a movie and the primary the primary voices around that came out of Force Awakens are this is too much like the Star Wars we know, then of course the tenant of the next film is going to be all right, let's give them something new. And that, again, that's why I think that's so admirable that they that they attempted that. Well, they, there was an attempt. At, at some yeah. point... Okay, they, so... so yeah, I just, ahead, at some point, they have to come out from the shadow of the original trilogy. Uh, yeah, I agree. And, oh, yeah, I agree. And I can't see that being a painless process. <laughs> you know, the, there's yeah, a lot of passion no, involved, no. And, and just perceiving something as different is always going to get complaints. Yeah. So I'm basically so, but, agreeing okay, with so you, Nick, that about... it's really hard to do, and they probably not nailed it particularly well. Mm. Right, and that's that's all I'm saying is that like they went for it, and they should have like they they definitely should have done what they did, but it just there's just again just minor things that just yes. needed to be cleaned up. Like well, I, the the high level ideas were all solid, and it, the the movie had some really cool scenes, but it's just when it falls down to the kind of like oh what why why like why couldn't we have Luke? Have a quick scene where he finally, you know, Yoda blows up the books, whatever. Oh, that was such a good scene. He, he has a oh, moment where he's like, scene. he has a moment where he's like, all right, god damn it. He goes over, right. he pulls his X walk, his X wing out of the drink, and you know, you, say Xbox. you know he's going. And then he 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 goes into his hut, and like from the deepest dankest corner under the floorboards, he pulls out this little box, and from behind the box, you see him open it reluctantly and just like he's hating every moment of this decision he's making and you look what's in the box it's his old green lightsaber he shows up and on the it's world darth vader's mask person. and he puts it on... no sorry go on yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there could have been this really cool moment where luke was out there distracting kylo where he's there okay this is, this is my hypothetical scenario where he's there in person because that's what should have happened so he was there in person he's there distracting kylo ray is watching him from the hangar we could have had this really cool moment where Luke looks back at Ray in the hangar and kind of has this knowing smirk, like, all right, here we are again, right before he lets Kylo cut him down in front of Ray. See, I was almost wondering if they were going to do that, but I, f- I feel like that kind of illustrates Same. one of the challenges that the filmmakers had, that everyone has this version of Luke's story or whoever's story that they're writing. There's like thousands of this story out there, and... You know, of course, I'm not saying that there were no mistakes made and that this is some perfect film, but I feel like almost no matter what direction they took, that there would be if people if they took that direction, they'd have the same people who are complaining about Force Awakens. Look, they have no new ideas. They're just repeating. So it, I think ultimately why I'm positive about this movie is because at least they took chances. At least they tried something lofty. Mm-hmm. And even with like the mm-hmm. Kanto bite thing, like I see where they were ideas there. They were trying to. Uh, continue this idea of like things are repeating there's a cycle like what is this machine right. these people are making money off of it and you mm-hmm. know these people are trying to recreate the legends they know from the original trilogy and they're failing and what does this mean and failure as a teacher all those kind of big things I think ultimately it was maybe a case of biting off more than they could chew like if you added a third arc to empire strikes back for example like there's luke and then there's cloud city and you add a third it might have suffered from the same problem so it's almost it would have yeah. like that's that, what, yeah that's the what Kanto bite here. scene the, the whole that whole sequence was unnecessary they could yeah. have had an imperial defector in the brig or something mm. And or or something to the do exact same effect. Something to do that's still there, but because if you look at Ray and Luke, I agree, I really like it. And and Poe's arc is almost like the most fleshed out arc in the movie. I would I would argue, oh, yeah. like watching it again. Like he develops so much from this hotshot pilot to basically 
you know, Leia has this line about, you know, we have dead heroes, but no leaders. And that's basically mm-hmm. his whole arc. He goes from being a hero, almost a wannabe dead hero, to being an actual leader and knowing the difference. But I right. just wish that Finn and Rose had a similarly, f- to that degree, fleshed out arc. But I don't think there was enough time for them to yeah. do no, that. No, there wasn't. And no, it and compromised such good what characters. was already there. Yeah. Right. And, and it's like, we sacrificed Finn's development in this movie in order to yep. double down on Rose's development. But then that ultimately, again, it happened in, in a situation that wasn't, wasn't integral to the movie at all. And it's like, uh, all right, I had another point and now I can't think of it. So <laughs> keep talking. I'll come back to it. So the other thing that bothered me about Luke's reintroduction, and I'm sorry, I'm hammering this home because Luke has always, like, I know it's cool to like Han Solo, but Luke has far and away always been my favorite hero in the Star Wars universe. I really, really, really wanted Luke to come back and wreck shop for at least a minute. I wanted a Luke equivalent to the Darth Vader scene we got in Rogue One. But that's that's exactly why he didn't. Like, that's exactly why they didn't do that is because that's what everybody felt is star wars and this movie says no like it's like that's fine that you think that but that's not what this star wars is this star wars is totally different and that's the whole well, point that's fine okay so here's another detail that bothered me so hollow luke shows up with anakin's lightsaber that we just saw destroyed three scenes ago but he's a hologram right well, yeah. like, why well and he also looks a lot like trim and nicer and like he looks like the best version of, you know what yeah, i mean like he looks like the, the best version of himself his yeah his projection <laughs> is the same it is the fact. same uh it's i thought it was bold that they went with terry cruz for that scene i thought for sure they just let mark hamill come <laughs> no <laughs> but like seriously like that's like that's that's what this movie is based on and the problem with that is then in the movie where they're trying to shatter everyone's expectations they force in like captain phasma for this little fight scene that the fight is cool but you know it's just in there because everyone is like well what about captain phasma she didn't do anything in the first you know what i mean like they're they're both trying to to give the viewers it was like they were it's almost like they didn't commit hard enough to one side of that argument and it was just i see that there's a conversation going on in chat but but that's that's kind of where i'm at it's like yeah i'm glad they did what they did but they needed to they just needed to ensure that they were dotting all their I's and crossing their T's. I, I think at the end of the day as well, the way films are made these days, there are, particularly with Disney and with the Star Wars franchise, there are a lot of different uh, cooks in the kitchen. There's a lot of people involved in making oh, sure that the yeah. right beats are hit and that it stays true to all the necessary things and satisfies all the audiences. And I just come back repeatedly mm. to the feeling that it's a children's film <laughs> and it like yeah. it's some of how poe behaves is very petulant ray does a lot of frowning and being mm-hmm. petulant and i think that that's i'm not that interested in watching a film of people being grumpy but i think that's really aimed at children <laughs> where they can really get that kind of like the world doesn't get me vibe <laughs> um but yeah more generally yeah. you know it, i thought it was great fun for kids but i know that people <laughs> that's sort of very patronizing but yeah <laughs> i will say i will say that i liked the last jedi better than force awakens overall simply mm. because force awakens really felt like this is cool by committee it felt like you know it i didn't am not feel, a whereas, committee well if and and jedi last jedi <laughs> felt like this is nice. someone's deliberate idea or someone's deliberate vision yeah. you know what i mean so it felt more in line with the original six which i like i will i okay let me preface this by saying i haven't watched any of the prequels in a long long time but right now like to me the force awakens feels the least like a star wars movie out of all of them because it's so what it feels like it it's because a copy it feels of one no, because of the star wars it, yeah it's it's to say, like, i can see that's, the argument that it's the most derivative of all of no them. and that's and that's why is because it feels like it feels so fake to me it feels like it's literally standing there and like grabbing the cookie cutters and just saying here we go whereas all the other ones to some extent had like two of the same cookies and then made their own third cookie you know what i mean like <laughs> it, getting it felt I, I had this. I'm just this now. <laughs> I had this strong sense of of falseness from from the Force it's Awakens. It's like JJ Abrams was that... like, "Hey, did you finish your homework? Can I copy it?" And the other guy's like, "Yeah, but just change it a little bit, so you know you don't know you copied me." Like, 
Well, and and J.J. Abrams, like, he has said, like, in the past, he said that he will never do Star Wars because he's too close to Star Wars. Like, he loves it mm-hmm. too much, and he doesn't want to... I think we all are. Is that it. why he killed and then And then he makes a Star Wars movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then, like, he makes a Star Wars movie, and it ends up being, like... Star Wars, literally? Uh, just a repeat. Yeah. 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 And... And it doesn't. It brings a couple of new ideas, but it doesn't explore them. It leaves those to the Last Jedi to explore. Oh and yeah. So then we have the last. Let's talk about how the Last Jedi failed to say anything at all about the Knights of Ren. That's what I was looking forward to. Like, hey, let's see what Kylo got up to. Maybe they were just and starting out. He is Kylo nothing. Ren. Like maybe he's the founding oh, member. He's, he's so like, emo. Hey, guys. Yeah. <laughs> he's looking for investors. You know. <laughs> No, there was a flashback in Force Awakens where Kylo is leading like six other dudes who are kind of dressed in similar. They're just yeah. force yeah, projections, yeah, Sean. They're just force projections. They're not real people. I feel Luke's like students, though, right? Like yeah, the ones that came I with him that didn't murder. And so maybe Kylo, like, we don't know, do we, Scott? They had the opportunity to tell us. But do you need to? Do you need to know? I wanted to. He just, sure, you wanted just, to. Obviously, it's more of Sean's gonna be another, desires. But is that going to be another yeah. white offshoot that people are going to be like, oh, do they really need to know about that? No, you just need they to know Kylo. It didn't need to take like 15 minutes, just just a little something. Like mm. the throne room, I kind of expected some of those guys like maybe to be the Knights of Ren. Maybe, maybe they, they were just sent out good, They like... were just sent out to get coffee and they're going to come back into the throne room. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who are these red guys? <laughs> what happened here? <laughs> Damn it, Ben. <laughs> yeah. uh, one of the hard things about the movie is... Um, and overall, like I said, I am very, I'm ended, ended up very positive. I think there's some great scenes, like the Kylo and Ray team up is amazing. I could watch that all day. And yeah, that was good. Uh, other parts yeah. of it, I think ultimately, I think this movie is going to age well. Uh, part part of the <laughs> thing for me though is it's hard for me to separate my feelings about the movie and and have these discussions with people from my overall dissatisfaction with internet culture in general around mm. movies like, oh, wow. it, wow. it's okay. driving yeah. me crazy that people like i get being critical of movies and you should have discussions and debates but i feel like everyone is just unable to enjoy anything like any, every single mm-hmm. movie gets here's the 20 plot holes in this movie and mm. let me make this movie this I mean, uh, there are literally this... youtube channels based around that single yeah. Yeah, yeah plot holes in every movie and here's what's wrong with it and the, i'm like if you subjected the original trilogy movies to that they would just be torn apart and like how yeah. would the oh, how yeah. would those movies be received if they were released today without all our nostalgia like they would just be and that that's that's exactly what I was saying. Like it's those sit in this unfair yes. pedestal position, and you know it bothers me when when people like straight up compare them because as as if the original trilogy is this perfect thing. Like I fully recognize in in my rational mind that it's got flaws. It's it's there are it's small fine. teddy bears I still love that it take it was out part of my storm childhood. troopers in the in the third one. <laughs> if you watch that as an adult, mm. it is the strangest experience because oh god see and like i have the same complaint there the original script yeah for they were they jedi were wookies, was the right? liberation of kashik yeah, yeah, yeah it was supposed to be the wookie and planet. you know what they did yeah. it would have been so much Do you cooler. know what he did he took wookie and he moved the e to the front and made it e walk oh my god mm-hmm. well he his kids were like what seven and eight at the time so he wanted to present them with something that was fun and so that's another thing with lucas is like he was su- like his style of filmmaking was so he's always so much got an like, eye on the merchandise well i don't even think it's that i think it's literally just like oh my kids like this so i'm gonna make this and like and that was like, a good said, that was like, a good lucas impression by the way <laughs> thanks but he's just like but at the same time like it was i'm really i'm in this really weird place with star wars because after watching the force awakens for the first time it almost gave me a new appreciation for the prequels because it made me realize that like you know everybody was screaming we don't want it to be this different after the prequels and then we got the force awakens and it's like well then here's the same thing again and i was like you know at least he tried to do something a little different now granted his his method of presenting that wasn't great um <laughs> and and I've like the last Jedi is the film that now I feel like, like now we're we're making Star Wars movies because at the time when I only had Force Awakens and Rogue One, these just felt like fan fiction. They just felt like you know. And that's I remember Tom saying to me that that Rogue One is like the best Edge of the Empire story that you know you and your friends playing. <laughs> yeah, and he's yeah. right. He's so right. But to me, that's not what 
saga Star Wars should be. And I know it's not saga, but but you know, you, do you follow what I'm saying? Like it's he's he's right in that regard, but to me that wasn't what I wanted. Like to me, a Star Wars movie without the Skywalker arc and without like because it's a I, I'm just rambling. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's so what you're what you're See, saying is you 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 had trouble with the movie because you had expectations of what it should be and it wasn't that. <laughs> for which for which movie? Which just one are you talking all about? of them apparently. Or <laughs> no, um, I loved the Last Jedi because it wasn't what I expected. Yeah, I like know. that's what I loved about it was that it broke expectations. Yeah. I know you're just being yeah. cheeky. <laughs> See, to me, Rogue One is still my favorite for that reason because I like that it explored non Skywalker stuff. It's the same reason why I like that Ray is a nobody, and I hope they keep that because I like this whole thing of. Yeah, that was a meta Ex- twist, wasn't exploring, it? Exploring. I mean, I think that's my own thing of how I approach movies and stories, but I like. I don't like this dynasty thing. I like exploring these just regular characters in Rogue One doing their thing. Like I get what you're saying, Nick, that it's it doesn't feel like the regular Star Wars, but that's the reason personally not being a big Star Wars guy why I liked Rogue One. But that's a separate sure. discussion. We don't need yeah. to discuss Rogue One right now. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's and you know, I I will agree that um that it's cool that they're exploring elements of Star Wars beyond the Skywalker line, but at the same time to me like this nine part series is in my opinion, or at least what I always thought is it's supposed to be exploring the Skywalker line and how this one family like has had uh, catastrophic effects on this galaxy. And Episode nine ex- is just going to be the rest of the galaxy going, fuck the Skywalker. <laughs> just kill them all. Them just shoot them out to another galaxy. Well, and I'm, and I'm also, I'm also in this weird place because my only star Wars ness, like I think I've read one book, um, but I've watched the movies and I've played games that are Star Wars and that's it. Like TV shows, I don't really go into books. I don't go into. So my knowledge of of uh, expanded universe and stuff like that is reliant on a whatever Sean has told me since we were kids <laughs> and b whatever made it into the Star Wars CCG. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, and most of what I knew as kids, that's now legends now. So exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, we got to cap this at some point, guys. So mm-hmm. final thoughts. <laughs> Um, I'll, Ian. Oh, Frank. I'll, I'll jump in as the guest <laughs> and then get myself out of the way. Ian, actually, I wanted to reply to something you said. Like, it is fascinating in this day and age seeing how people respond to things in the way that they didn't before. Um, just before Christmas, I saw the musical Hamilton, and mm-hmm. it's just opened mm. over here. Uh, there are people who are incredibly excited about it, and I knew really nothing about it. And I sort of didn't understand how people in London were that excited about this thing that hadn't arrived here yet. And they somehow, the the girl I was sitting next to, she was teenage, she was singing along the whole way through the show and already knew the words. And I loved that. It was amazing that she was so into it and I knew nothing. And I really enjoyed it. But I was really struck by how strange it was that there were already people who had really strong opinions about something that hadn't even arrived yet. And I felt with Last Jedi exactly the same way. There were already people who were furious with it. And I was sort of just trying to catch up with why it was important and why pop culture had reached this point where you had to be kind of frothing at the mouth or your opinion didn't matter. And yeah, my opinion was I enjoyed it. I'll see it again one day. (laughs) (laughs) Ian, I mean, I think I've about said it all. I uh, I like the movie a lot. I love the things I was trying to say about how they just keep repeating the cycle and that they need to break it. I think Luke was actually yeah. right about that. Um, my big fear is that that's all going to be walked back with Abrams, and it's just going to go back to more safe um, themes. But we'll see. Is, is he doing the next one? Now. Is he doing the next one? He is, yeah. Episode he nine placed, or uh, or the next yep. standalone? Episode nine. Ryan, well, and Ryan Johnson has more Star Wars movies, just okay. not episode cool. nine, from what I understand. Yeah, I'm really curious what he'll do with it when, you know, when he can control a whole trilogy by himself. I think it's going to mm-hmm. be good, actually. So I'm looking forward to that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, Last Jedi gets a thumbs up for me with acknowledgement that there are wrinkles in it. Nick, um, I will always so when it comes down to it, and when I consider like Hollywood and big entertainment and that sort of thing, I will always stand by the belief that we need more new ideas, and mm-hmm. the Last Jedi brings new ideas. Um, and it 
it gets my positive vote for that. My only recourse is that I wish that it it had handled some of them a little bit better. Scott? Uh, I really like the movie. I think <laughs> the idea behind... like I, I think the director hinted at this being the middle movie, kind of like the same way Empire is. Uh, but he did it in a in a fancier way than Abrams did by like just copying the movie. Um, like there's little things, right? Like they go to this planet that's covered in white, but at one point the guy you know puts his finger on it, looks he's like, oh, it's salt. Like mm. really mm. cheeky, nosy things, stuff like when Rose gets <laughs> on the Falcon and she's injured, she lays on the same place Luke did when he was injured at the end of Empire. Um, there's just a lot of these little things that... Except everyone missed it because Rose was nowhere nearly as important to character. Well, exactly. And I bet people also miss that, like... Uh, what's her name? Ray took the Jedi books. Like, when he opens up the drawer to grab the mm-hmm. the blanket... Yeah. Like, those, she has the the super page turny text. The ancient Jedi text! Yes. Which I was... I was... I'm, gonna, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I was, I was upset okay, that that happened. Let's... Like, I had... <laughs> yeah, I had really wished I had really wished again that the film had stuck to its guns to challenge that idea of sacred tradition. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I was I was a little upset that they subverted their own. But of course message. Ray took them. Like she's this the greatest subversion, Nick, subverging the subversion. She's got this huge like <laughs> boner for Jedi, right? Like of course she's gonna take these original Jedi texts, right? It's like a comic book collector going after an original print of some comic or something, right? Like it, it just She's like, holy crap! This is what I've always wanted. And so, oh uh, yeah, I'm not disagreeing. And that growing it's up, doesn't she totally just collect does. junk just... as well? So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Killed yeah. it. Anyways, I like uh, all the it. cheeky little reflections of Empire Strikes Back. I think there, there's like so many, and it on the second watch, I caught a lot of them, but they're just so tiny and subtle, and I, I, I loved it. So, have you got? You've got that salt button ready to press for 30 seconds now, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I'm actually, I st- I would put this, I would put The Last Jedi above the prequels. I'm not sure yet whether oh. I like it more than Force Awakens. Um, but ultimately, yeah, that's what it was. Like, there were some really cool scenes. It had some really good ideas. I personally think that it fell short on execution of some important bits. Uh, but ultimately, like I said at the top, like I, uh, I still am trying to tease apart my, you know, it, it's subverting my expectations versus whether or not that actually means I don't like it. It's not a perfect movie that I think we can all agree on, but I think anyone with real expectations would, would know that no movie is perfect. Even like Empire Strikes Back to me is the pinnacle of cinema. Mm-hmm. That's not a perfect Doesn't have movie. an ending. But that's what's great about it. It ends like with not an ending, and the heroes are like <laughs> shit out of luck. It's a great act too. But anyway, yeah. anyway, so the last Jedi. <laughs> it's no Nacho Libre. It's, oh my god. Oh <laughs> my. <laughs> Nacho. I give. I give, <laughs> I give <laughs> Last Jedi a shaky thumbs up. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I still have to see it again. I've only seen it the one time. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll notice Same here. I'll notice other things on a second watch through, but. Anyway, so, guys, fun episode. Frank, thanks again for coming on. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for having me. It's uh, really flattering. And, yeah, thank you, Sean, for organizing everything, and including that amazing soundboard that was clawing at the edges of my sanity. And thank you guys for having this podcast in this <laughs> Discord, because I wouldn't have got talking to Peter, and we wouldn't be doing our podcast if it wasn't for you guys. So we're incredibly grateful even though we hate you <laughs> <laughs> so we sowed the seeds for our own destruction much like the jedi with the sith that's what you're <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna sample the bit where um uh when sean read out about peter sylvester being the favorite ally he yelled everyone loves some peter i think i'm gonna try and sample that and <laughs> yeah. play that to peter whenever well you know he uh, i'll make that my wife's <laughs> <window>. <laughs> Oh, geez. So yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks very much for having me. All right, well, it's on you guys now. So you have to defend your title and come up with the next game show that we play on Drawn to the Flame. So <laughs> we'll be waiting on that. Great, we'll do that. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> no pressure. That's going to wrap it up for episode 31 of Mythos Busters. We'll see y'all next time. <laughs> <laughs>